Welcome again to the SEM podcast. I am your solo host today, Zach Hewlett. And today we are having a special episode. The reason why this is special is because we're talking to the famous Brian Bear. And Brian was the guinea pig. If you go back to episode number three of our uh, podcast, Brian was the first to come on and share. And our format evolved to the point where Brian has more memories and some more things that he wanted to share. And so what the heck? We we want to give Brian the opportunity to do that. So first and foremost, Brian, thank you so much for being the guinea pig that came on, that allowed us to really feel out where we were going with this. And then we finally found the structure. And so we're here and there's 90 some odd episodes between your first episode and now. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what you've learned and what's been coming back to you. So how are you, brother? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Yeah, I've just been uh, as because I've been an avid listener and I've just been really like over the last like probably 70 episodes. <laughs> I'm just like, man. This is so awesome. I didn't know they just wanted me to come on and just tell stories. I'm full of stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, like everything was just so new at that point in time. And we were yeah. really just kind of like Jack and I had talked about how we wanted to format it. And as I listen back to your episode and I think to Joseph Bautista's and to Amy Cooper's, which Amy is going to come back on the podcast in a few weeks as well. Oh, good. Um, we we really were kind of feeling through things and then the format kind of evolved itself almost perfectly when we got into Scott McAndrews and beyond that. But you were you were really that that first iteration of us trying to figure out, OK, how do we make this make this seamless? And and then obviously with time limit limitations and restraints, keep it within a certain time frame. But I'm excited to hear all your stories. So. We truly can skip the introduction of yeah. how you got your mission call, skip what it. you're up to now, and anyone who's listening to this that missed Brian's first episode, go back. It's episode three. You'll have to scroll a little bit further down. I promise you'll find it. And it was a great episode nonetheless. But Brian, I'm going to just give the time to you and you can start MTC, go through your companions and your areas again, and then let's just go through memories from there. Perfect. Okay. Uh, real quick. I didn't, uh, a lot of, there's a few missionaries that bragged on their kids. I want to brag on my kids for a little bit. So my oldest son, he's 14. Um, he's super into art and Japanese culture. He's trying to learn wow. Japanese right now. He's a, just, he's a fun little guy. Um, it, I was, uh, I'm one of those, I, I have an ego big enough that I thought my kids were going to be little, little versions of myself. <laughs> that is absolutely not true. <laughs> They're so different than me, man. I thought there was just going to be a bunch of little awesome little wrestlers. That, no, no, they they have their own talents uh, that are completely different than mine, and it's super fun. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, man. So I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure some of that came from your awesome wife too. Yes, yes, she is a um, she's a professional violinist. She has tons of talents, way more than I do. <laughs> I have a talents in a nice little box. Her talents is are her, her talents are way, way vast. But anyways, yeah. So I have a 14 year old son, uh, an 11 year old son who just became a deacon. Uh, I have a nine year old daughter who is a Spitfire. She is pretty. She and the youngest one, Emmett, who's six. He, she, and my youngest son are, are the most like me. In fact, Emmett got did get sent to the principal's office for the first time uh, this year, which <laughs> if my kids were going to be like me, we knew that was coming. <laughs> so, yeah, I love it. We, we got home and, and Amanda's like, you need to, you need to talk to Emmett. He went to the principal's office and was like, Oh dang, what'd he do? And she's like, well, he, uh, he got frustrated with the teacher and leaned over to the girl next to him and said, he was going to, he's like, we should burn the school down. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I was like, "Well, Mandy, we, I, we, we were wondering if one was one that was going to be like me, and there it is. And we got one. So <laughs> good, luck, good luck to us. Because the good news is, is that by the time I was his age, I'd already been there like four or five times. So at least this is the first time. So we are still net positive right now. So, yeah. Oh man, I love that. That's so good. 
So we told him like, I don't know. I, part of me is like, holy cow, teacher, you're, you're teaching like a six-year-old who is just frustrated with life. He's not actually going to try to burn the school down. But the other part is like, dude, you also got to be careful what you say. <laughs> These days, man, you can't say stuff like that. <laughs> no, unfortunately you can't. That's very true. Yeah. Oh man, that's, that's great. I love that. I, I mean, amazed that your oldest is studying Japanese as a 14 year old. I mean, more power to him. Hopefully yeah. that, that, that gets him where he wants to be eventually. That's awesome. Yeah. If, if he could, if he could choose where he would serve his mission now, it'd be Japan. We'll see if we'll see what he wants to do when he gets older or uh, if he wants to continue with that choice. I, I certainly hope to, I hope so, but um, yeah. he's, he's, he's doing solid right now. That's where he would choose to serve if he could go now. But that might change. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little bit of time, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Love All it. right. So, so we went Preston, England, MTC. Yeah. Which was super cool. We went, I, I went it there with Blake Farnsworth. Um, we had Elder Wood. We had Elder Schmidt. We had Elder Kellogg, um, Elder Erickson. And is that all of us? Yeah. I think that's all of us. Just six of us that were going to Scotland. Okay. Um, and, uh, my companion was elder Erickson and, um, we got along just swell. Um, he and I were, were different, but we got along great. Um, and there was 30 missionaries that came in with us. This is April, 2006 that we went in No, 2004. Yeah. Cause I served in 2006 and right. we're old. We're all back. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, <laughs> 2000, April, 2004 is when we went into the MTC. Um, and, uh, we got there and I was, I thought that they would give us a little bit longer of a time to actually like settle in and, and get some, uh, get, get rid of that. Uh, what's it called? Jet lag. Jet lag. And, and they didn't, they're just like, <laughs> they just go in and, and that was fun. Um, we had, uh, a, a good group of missionaries. Um, we had a, one elder, uh, from Africa who was from Congo and he was serving French speaking in France. Um, and so he came to the press in England MTC cause he didn't have to learn French cause he already knew it. Um, but he <laughs> it was hilarious cause he always had trouble with quiet dignity. <laughs> <laughs> you go through the halls and be like, Hey, junior, junior bear. Hey, junior bear. That's what he called me. Junior bear. I don't know why. Just probably cause I'm so small. <laughs> and he's like, how you doing? Oh, right. And see like the mission president. Like, right, right. Uh, quiet. <laughs> right. <laughs> There was a lot of quiet dignity, quiet dignity preached in the yeah. MTC, right? It was, it was a little excessive in my opinion. Also, another fun thing that you saw, you all, you, I've heard like five or six missionaries talk about how they would go down and sneak cookies from the kitchen in the MTC. And every single one of them felt like they were totally original when they did that. And I'll be honest, I felt like I was original in stealing those cookies too. But we all did it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we all just stuck, just snuck out in the middle of the night and stole cookies. <laughs> so, oh, I mean, it's it's like how how else would you have known that that is something that other missionaries had done? You know, you kind of we didn't because yeah, you all at the same time. <laughs> right, exactly. There's no bleed over. So yeah, yeah. It's just so funny. It's just like oh, I heard I heard someone say, and I was like, oh man, I did that too. And then like the next one was like. Hey, they thought they did the only ones too. Hey, we all did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, after a day's worth of reading and teaching and sitting for whatever reason, you're just hungry. So oh my goodness. I mean, it made perfect sense. We heard stories from missionaries that got ice cream, you know, to, I used to go down and steal toast. Like I, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't eating cookies. I just wanted like some bread and butter or bread and jam and, yeah. I was I was set, you know. It was always cookies and apples for me. They always had the the fruit the fruit basket out, and so I would always oh, yeah. just I'd take a cookie and a couple apples, and we'd be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We could arm wrestle all night. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, um, right. they, it was it was cool. Um, Elder Erickson and I, when we would teach, uh, I learned pretty early on that he had some trouble with reading. Um, and he had dyslexia, he was, uh, d had dyslexia. And so he had really, really hard time reading. Um, and this is a really cool experience, Zach, because, uh, I never served around him until the end of my mission. Um, so he and I got along really well in the MTC, never served around each other. Uh, Elder Kellogg and I served around each other 
and obviously me and Blake did. Um, but I never served around Elder Schmidt or Elder Wood or and then Elder Erickson at the very end of my mission. And when I served with him, I got to go on exchange with him when I was in Glasgow at the very end of my mission and got to teach with him. And because it was his area, he was leading the discussion. And it was he was just it was he was a better reader than I was. And I I, I remember going to the flat that night and asking him, I was like, what? What changed Elder Erickson? Like this this is awesome. And he's like, well, he's like, honestly, he's like, I talked to president Bodane and the mission, the mission or the president of the MTC. And he promised me that if I read the book of Mormon every single night that, um, he, he said, he, he promised me that, that my, my reading would get better. And, uh, he's like, by the end of your mission, you'll be able to read just fine. And he's like, and here it is. And I was like, holy cow, that's so wow. cool, man. It I just, just got chills. Dude, it was awesome. Elder Erickson's a stud. I think he went and he and I haven't kept up, but I know that he was wanting to be a helicopter pilot. And I think he did that. Um, and I haven't kept kept up with him after that, but if you could get him on, that'd be super cool. Cause he was just a stud of a dude. For um, sure. I, I, he's, he's on my hunting list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I remember, Oh, I have a funny, funny story. I remember one night when we were all there, we were encouraged to read our patriarchal blessings. So we were all in all six of us, Scottish missionaries were all in the same, in the same room. And so we're all out reading our, uh, our, uh, patriarchal blessings and, and elder Kellogg leans over to elder Erickson. It's like, elder Erickson, you're supposed to be reading your patriarchal blessing. And he's like, I am. He's like, no, you're not. That's a novel. (laughs) (laughs) How long is your patriarchal blessing? It was 12 pages, Zach. 12 pages. 12 pages. I was like, not only like, how did that kid stay awake in the first place? Like I would have been gone. Like I was, mine's like a, maybe a page. And I was like, like I was falling asleep during my patriarchal blessing. I was, I he did that. <laughs> so, wow! Was, so we all teased it for a while. We we're like, "Holy cow, prophet!" Jeez. <laughs> was it a family member that gave him his blessing or something? It was. It was. Okay. All right. That that makes a little bit more sense. But it man, does. twelve pages—that's a lot. Excessive. But but, <laughs> but who am I to say? I'm not. I'm not in charge of that. So. <laughs> but, but it was hilarious. I remember I remember us giving him a hard time about that. Maybe it wasn't 12 pages. Maybe that's just what was in my brain. But it was like, I remember it being super long. <laughs> so, oh, that's really funny. Yeah. I was like, that's a novel. That's not a patriarchal blessing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. That sounds like other Kellogg too. That's really good. Yeah. So we went. Uh, so MTC was fun. Um, incredibly boring to me. I, I hated sitting in that desk. Uh, it's just not my style of learning. Um, and, I mean, I, I struggled throughout college, college, I spent most of my college days playing pool, uh, skipping class and then studying when I got home anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh-huh. Trust me, I'm, I'm an okay nurse practitioner. I promise guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got the basics down. You're good. I can't do it. Like, you, you throw me in a clinical setting and I'm fine. I cannot do like the, the desk stuff. That is not my style. And so I had a hard time, uh, but luckily we had an awesome teacher. Brother Burgess was our teacher, redhead. Uh, yeah, I remember did, Brother Burgess. Yeah, yeah, he was a stud. He did great. Um, and every every day at class, he would write on the board in chalk, quench not the spirit, um, which became one of my favorite scriptures. It's in uh, Thessalonians, but it's it's awesome. Uh, yeah, one of, one of my favorites. And so but I love that uh, that mantra that he he drilled into our heads. It was good. Anyway, so we go up to Scotland, um, and uh, oh no, wait, another quick funny story from the MTC. I remember being in the MTC when we were when we were going around in one of those giant vans. I forget what we were doing. We were going to visit. Oh, it was one of those one of the we were visiting one of the sites that you, that you go and see when you're in the MTC, right? That that yeah. cool castle in that little town. Um, and as so we're in the van, we see missionaries off on the like road. I'm like, Hey, look, guys, real missionaries! <laughs> <laughs> and one of the other elders like in the bus is like we're real missionaries and i was like oh yeah <laughs> well not really yet but sure <laughs> <laughs> it just it didn't feel like we were missionaries yet <laughs> so, <laughs> oh goodness you were still in the preparatory stage you were in the yes, van that's right yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't they wouldn't let you out into the public yet <laughs> right <laughs> exactly so we're not real <laughs> okay <laughs> Elder nielsen who went to ireland whatever <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Oh goodness. So, anyways, we um, so we get we go up to Scotland, and I remember getting off the train, and the first person I met was Maroni Cardenas, 
Um, and I was like, all right, sweet guy who looks like South American, you know, uh, Latino. I was like, this, this guy's, this guy's close to, close to a lot of people I know when I grew up in Oklahoma. And, uh, and he's like, all right, how are you? And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> these, <laughs> these things aren't computing in my brain. <laughs> was totally unprepared for that, that accent of his. <laughs> it was like, whoa, whoa, it's. I just, I don't know. I, I think it's, it must be our American culture. Like we just don't realize that people who look different than our traditional view of, of English can also have English accents. That always was weird to me. I don't know why it was weird to me, but it was. <laughs> no, I agree. I yeah. agree. Um, but it was, it was awesome to be able to, to see him get a, I got a big hug from him first before president Green's got a hold of me and tried <laughs> to break my back, you know? Gives you gives you one of those present brains hugs. <laughs> yes, I love how he he always set his feet like set his feet. It's like set, like he was prepping for that hug. Like he'd set his feet and then he just boom. <laughs> it's just like oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Even for me, I, I would get buried in those hugs. I mean, I, and I'm about looking eye to eye to him, but he still just completely engulfed me. You know. Love those hugs. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. And so we went to the mission home. We, uh, we got to do our first mission dinner with president for sister Breen's and uh, sister Breen's and I started off, uh, not on the greatest foot, Zach. Um, <laughs> she and I became great friends later in the mission, but at first, like, and, and you know, my mom raised me with pretty good manners, but I wasn't prepared for some of the manners that they had for that table. Um, and so like there, everyone is standing behind the chairs and, President Green's like, okay, let's sit down and eat. And uh, he's, you know, he's standing with his hand on the back of the chair. And I was like, all right. And I pull my chair out and I sit down and everyone's just there standing. And President Reigns looks up at me like, <laughs> and President Reigns, and Sister Reigns goes, Alter Bear, we always wait till the hostess sits before we eat. Or everyone else sits down. And I was like, right, right, okay, <laughs> get out. Of it. <laughs> air back down, and then she sits down. I was like, "Great!" So then we sit down and we say the prayer, and uh, and we we had this rule in my house, man. Like where mom, like we we just would always wait to eat till mom ate. Um, it was just a just a simple rule in our house. But I don't know what was going on that day, but I was so hungry that I was just like ready to dig in. So I picked up my stuff and I was like ready to eat. And <laughs> Sister Fritz goes, "Elder Bear." Usually we wait until the hostess eats first and then everyone else. And I was just like, freaking, I'm going to throw these forks down and I'm just going to leave. Okay. <laughs> like, I was like, they, I just screwed everything up. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty funny. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I was like, golly, can't catch a break here, but it, it is fine. It is fine. It was good. Those are good lessons for, for people to learn in general. <laughs> so, but um, so I meet, I meet elder trainer who is my trainer and everyone called him the bear trainer, which was hilarious <laughs> um, to everyone else. And, uh, <laughs> and elder trainer um, was, he was a, a fun guy from Birmingham, England. Um, and he sung the, uh, the English song of the world cup all the time <laughs> three lines on the shirt george remains still gleaming he would just sing it all the time and i was like when did, when did you win the world cup and he's like 66 elder bear 66 I'm like, <laughs> you say it like it was yesterday man <laughs> like holy cow <laughs> that's amazing yeah it's uh it's, it's so fun he was he's a great dude but um he had a there's a a girl that eventually becomes his wife, um, Hazel, that he uh, would talk to all the time. Uh, and he would never let me have the phone. <laughs> so he would, <laughs> there was, we, would, we would take breaks and we'd play chess. And uh, we, oh yeah, that's right. We whitewashed into the area. And so the first thing he was, he'd always be like, I'd always be like, well, we should go out and, you know, try to find some investigators and things. Like and he'd always just look at me and be like, Elder Bear, what do you know? You're only a greenie. <laughs> just like, just like, just all the time like i don't know man i just feel like we should probably get out of the flat and work a little bit <laughs> he's like now the first 
first rule of whitewashing elder bears, you gotta you gotta organize yourself. You gotta organize everything. And so he we, first thing we did, we go out and we got all the bus things and he had he had was super organized. He had like maps for certain areas and busings and but I, I felt like we probably spent about two weeks too long doing that. Um <laughs> 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 All in good time, Elder Bear. <laughs> and, and, uh, there are times where you know he'd be on the phone for hours, and so I would just go out to the shops, <laughs> like because so our our apartment, our flat was right next, right across the street from the church in Air. That was our first area. It was Air, and uh, and there's there's a church, and then there's down the hill, a uh, church is on Mosgill Road, and then down the hill there's these shops, and so I'd be like. He'd be like, "Oh, well, you can you can go grab some some groceries if you want. I'll be I'll sit right here on the phone." <laughs> it's just like it's like it's all right. I'm outside. I'm outside the flat. I can see you walk down the hill. It's all right. And I was like, "Fine, I'm gonna go do some missionary work." And so I would go down to this shop and I'd just talk to people and get to know them and their life and you know I'd try to share a little bit. But I mean, I was just what did I know? I was only a greenie, and so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was. So I just kind of became friends with like all the people in that area um, and like look for opportunities to help them. I would, I would go to the, the bakery shop and help like, uh, and I think this is before that one was, be I think it became a Stobbs the Baker. I think oh, Umberto Gilardi eventually owned that bakery, but I don't think he did it first when I was, maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember, but I would go and I'd help them unload stuff and like load it up. And I just got to know everyone there while he would be on the phone. <laughs> and I remember him taking me to our first time GQ and down to the high street. And he'd just, he'd settle himself down on a, on a bench. And he'd be like, All right. So what you do out there is you go up there, just get out, stand out there with all everyone's just walking and you kind of just stop people and you talk to them. Okay. Well, about what? Like, can can you show me something? No, no, no. no. You, you got this. You got it. And you just sit there. While I struggled through it. Oh, my word. I was like, all right. I guess this is what I do. <laughs> Jeez. And so I had, then there's multiple times where I just sit there and I'd be GQing on the street and I'd look back and he's not there on the bench. And I'd be like, he probably went to go get some meat. All right. Then I just keep GQ in there. <laughs> like an hour later, like, oh, there's the other trader. I'll find <laughs> Maybe we can go do a lesson or something. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and uh, it was funny. It was, it was hilarious. And so um, I remember looking through our area book, and he was really interested in, in the area book. And I was like, well, all these, all these like previous investigators, they all seem like they don't really, they're not. They're not super progressing. Maybe we should go find some new. Cause I was, I was all on just like, I had to be moving. Like I was just that I had that greeny fire. Like I, um, sitting around and making maps was not my thing. <laughs> Even though I think it was incredibly important for that area in the long run. Um, right. just, I, I was having a hard time handling that. Um, and, uh, I felt like I, I was still under the mindset that if I'm not finding that I'm not really doing missionary work, Whereas he helped me, he's just like <laughs> one of his one of his sayings was, "Elder Bay, why would we need to go find people when we've got tons of people here already found? Let's just go teach them." It's like, okay. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> even though none of them were progressing, and, and not not just progressing, they had all dropped the missionaries. But he wanted to re. But I mean, there's and there's lots of people who had success. You know, they had met with the missionaries, not not been able to be have success and then those uh, different pair of missionaries are able to help that person come come to come to Christ and gain that testimony right yeah. um, uh, or, or we're just there at the right time when the spirit was ready for them w one of those two things right and so um uh, that may be a better way of saying it but but yes uh but yeah it was and so that, that was just a little bit harder for me <laughs> but but it was it was a good time uh we, we got along okay um other, other than I would get frustrated with him being on the phone a lot. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but I didn't, I wasn't one to write president about issues or problems. Um, it wasn't my style. I, I never did that. Uh, I, I would write about my progress and things that I would learn. Um, and I just, I was never a whiner. Um, and I don't want to say people who complain or who, who, who 
I pro there's probably some things I should have mentioned to, to president over the course of my mission with the companions, but I just, it just wasn't my style. Um, I just didn't, I don't know, just didn't do that. And so, uh, and, and so I, I'm not knocking anyone who, who did those things, but it's just, just wasn't me. Um, and so anyway, so, so the president probably didn't have much of an idea about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> about any of those things and, until Elder Boudin came along and uh, Elder Boudin was, we, we got to do some real missionary work. Uh, like I, I mentioned, I think in the first time that he kind of changed the course of my mission and I've listened to his podcast and he talks about taking me out to a job he suffered, which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the, the only part that he left out was that um, he I said it loud enough that there is like there's I mean in in this fish and chip shop it was it was a tiny little place down in uh, what was Gervin Gervin on the coast uh, down south of Air. It's just a tiny little chip shop, and there's like six old dudes in there eating their chippies. And I said it loud enough that they're all like, oh, I just ordered a job in summer. Ah! <laughs> I was like, so like, it wasn't just Elder Trainer and Elder mm -hmm. Dan's laughs. It was like the old guys in the fish shop. They're all laughing. I was like, <laughs> just, just, doing, just give me what that guy got. <laughs> it's, uh, it's oh awesome. my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> I got him back though. So Elder Bhutan, here's a funny story about Elder Bhutan is that he is not a morning person. He is not. He would wake up every morning and he would put his hood on over his face and he'd fold his arms like this, sit there and read his scriptures. Like, it's just like a proper grump. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, Elder Bhutan's not a morning person, huh? Well, I'll show him a job he's supper. <laughs> So, so I remember I just tackled him one morning and I think his scriptures went flying and <laughs> he was not prepared for it and not in the mood. <laughs> and so I learned very quickly that Elibutan actually had some wrestling skills, which I was surprised about, um, which was also impressive to me. It was like, golly, not only is this guy an amazing missionary, but he's also quite the athlete. Goodness gracious. Is there anything wrong with this guy? <laughs> perfect specimen of a man um which hilarious oh man i got another i forgot about this story so there's one person that we went and taught we were finding we we're out not chapping doors and we were teaching it was a single mom um with two just tiny tiny little kids and we were just teaching her the first lesson elder Bhutan was teaching the whole thing zach and <laughs> the mom started across the the room and elder trainer and I harassed elder Batan about this, like the rest of the time he was only with us for like 10 days, but like this must have happened like within the first four or five days. Cause like the next six days, we just gave him such a hard time that this lady um, was across the room as he was teaching. And then like 15 minutes in the lesson, she's like about like five feet closer. And by the end of the lesson, she's like at the foot of the couch, looking up into Elder Batan's eyes as he's like, that's the fuck. <laughs> like she had gradually moved across the room and then just like, <laughs> just like doughy eyed right up in this. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it's like, I was like, we got out of there and Elder Trainer's like, Elder Batan, I don't think you're allowed to go to that house anymore. <laughs> She's going to go away. <laughs> He should have committed her to baptism right then. Oh man, <laughs> she would have said whatever you say. Oh, man, whatever was, you say, it was, it was hilarious. So, <laughs> Arthur, if you listen to this, you—I don't know if you remember that, but it was hysterical and also <laughs> totally hilarious. It was amazing. So, yeah. Oh, that's I, great. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, Elder Batan. I remember another thing that was cool is that um, when he was with us, I noticed that he had. Uh, piercings in one of his ear, and I, I said, "Oh, Batan, what? Where?" Uh, I was like, "You those? I'm surprised those haven't grown in. When did you take your earrings out?" And he's like, "This morning." And I was like, <laughs> I was "Like you put your earrings in every night?" And he's like, "Yep." Like, All right, cool. interesting, cool. <laughs> And then, you know what's you know what's interesting is that after he was uh, in the mission home for a little while, um, I went on exchanges with him again, and those those ear holes had grown in, like they were they were gone. <laughs> so, wow, <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah, it was awesome. He's he's just uh, he's such an amazing amazing missionary that showed me that 
um, not only could you have a blast, but you could uh, work hard and have the spirit with you all the time. And he did a great job of that. He, he found that balance perfectly, a balance that I tried to find the rest of my mission. And uh, I don't know if I ever got as perfect as he had. It was awesome. Hmm. He was That's such a cool. stud. He was such a stud. Um, so, yeah, so we had Elder Bertain. Elder Bertain that was awesome. Um, oh, another fun thing with Elder Trainer is uh, we were going to go on exchanges over to the Isle of uh, Air. No, no, wait, we're in Air. The Isle of Aaron. Aaron, that's it. Yeah, just across from Kill Winning. Um, and we're going to go there with Sister Heap, Sister Hart, and um, Elder Rittman, who is training Elder Clausen. Um, and there, I don't know, wait, I don't think he was training. Is he training him? I don't remember. But it's Elder Rittman and Elder Clausen. And we were going to go on a go over to the Isle of Aaron with them. And Elder Rittman and Elder Clausen called us that morning and said they weren't able to make it. So it was just Elder Trainer and I and Sister Heart, Sister Heap and Sister Heart. And Elder Trainer's like, oh, I don't think we can go. He's like, that's like a double date. <laughs> He's like, I'm fine with it. If you're fine with it, Elder Bear. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> we're not going to do anything stupid. So, yeah, I'm fine with it. And, and I remember Sister Heart was on the phone when we were in uh, waiting for the ferry um, and sister heap was like, wait, the other elders aren't coming. And we're like, no, they're not, they're not going to come. She's like, don't tell sister Hart. I really want to go to the Isle of Aaron. And I bet she wouldn't go if it's just us, two, us, two, and, or us elders and you, our sisters and you, you guys. And we're like, all right, fine. <laughs> we won't tell. <laughs> and so we got on the ferry and sister Hart's like, when are, uh, when's elder Rittman and elder Clausen going to get here? And, and elder train is like, Oh no. <laughs> so, it's like, and then he pretended like they texted like late and he's like oh it looks like they're not gonna make it like as we're like pulling <laughs> it's, like i look at sister heaps and she keeps like yes <laughs> so funny. it is hilarious it was cool because sister heap and i were in air at the same time for six months okay. so it, it was really fun to be able to to have that because um, sister heap says that she was always like super quiet and awkward. And that was not my experience with sister heap at all. Um, she was a little bit quieter, but I thought she was hilarious and I thought she had some amazing stories and she'd be kind of, she became kind of like my, like if, if you look the American version of the office, you know, there's like, you know, Jim Halper, he like always looks at the camera during like something awkward or some weird situation. Sister Heap and I became like, we were like each other's gym. Like whenever something weird or awkward would happen, we'd always be like, mm. <laughs> so I knew that I could look up if something was awkward or weird was happening. I could look at Sister Heap and we'd both like, just be like, yeah, this is weird and awkward. <laughs> it was just hilarious. Um, and that, that circumstance, uh, those kind of circumstances came up fairly often. Uh, more so with uh, with Elder Stratton and I than uh, Elder Trainer and I. Um, it was it was pretty fun, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember one time. Uh, so Sister he talked about how she and Sister Bogomolova baptized Fati Katinji, uh, and mm -hmm. Fati uh, it was from Turkey, uh, and he married uh, a girl from uh, Utah. Her name was Celeste, or Celestia. Um, anyways, and just uh, and she was a member, and he was not. Um, it took him a while to to uh, gain his own personal testimony before he decided to be baptized. But I can remember after his um, after his or during his baptism because he asked me to baptize him, and he we got down into the, we, he wanted to get baptized the way the Savior got baptized. He's like, "No, I don't get baptized in fun. I get baptized the way Jesus did." And so we find this like <laughs> this like like waterfall going into this like puddle <laughs> like this small little pond um up in the up in this middle of nowhere uh out in air and uh and the the water had a lot of iron in it so it was like brackish like really kind of reddish yeah it looked like it looked like uh tea actually is what it looked like um <laughs> and, and so i was like going into this and uh i was going into this water and uh, you know you the rock rocks rocks were all kind of kind of jagged and stuff. And so I was walking in there. It was okay. Um, and then he comes in 
and he grabs me and with the waterfall. No one could hear anything I'm saying. And so, so it didn't really matter what, what I said, except for, except for what, what, the, what the church wanted. But I made sure I said the right words, but he leaned into me and he's like, Elder Bear, I have lots of sin. Hold me underwater long time. And I was like, no, I can't do that. No, one, no one's going to know that I'm not actually drowning. <laughs> and he goes, no, I'm serious. Long time. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that, Fati. But whatever. <laughs> so, so I go to I go to baptize him, and he holds himself under like for like an extra like five seconds. And I'm like, trying to pull him up. Like, and he's like fighting me. It's like everyone's like, oh my gosh, Elder Bear's drowning this person. Except, except oh. Sister Heat didn't mention mention this in her podcast. So maybe she didn't remember, or maybe it wasn't that obvious, but I felt him fighting me, trying to pull him back up out of the water. He did not want to come out. <laughs> So, like, oh, please don't drown. <laughs> so that was, it was pretty funny. Um, but, uh, and Sister Heap said that she, she and uh, Sister Bogomolova shared a, uh, a horrible rendition of a song that, and I have no memory of that song. So it wasn't that bad, Sister Heap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have remembered. I promise. If it was terrible. I would have remembered. <laughs> <Those, laughs> terrible things are always easier to remember than great things sometimes. I don't know why, but it's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Very true. <laughs> so, so you could sleep well at night, Sister Heap, that you did not do a terrible job. <laughs> and may, maybe it's the fact that no one could hear you anyway because of the, because the water uh, the waters are running there anyway. Uh, <laughs> but um, but anyway, so we we go to the Isle of Aaron and that was that was a lot of fun. We had a good time. Um, and uh, Elder Trainer goes somewhere else. Um, and I get Elder Stratton. And Elder Stratton's this big, uh, tall, um, handsome guy that. Uh, Knows that he's handsome. <laughs> oh no! Uh, you know, it, Greg. You know, you know that you knew you were a handsome dude. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a few times where I teased him. It's like you know, Elder Stratton, you could actually walk by these uh, these shops without looking at yourself with the glass. I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 funny so, funny thing is craig we're talking to craig in a couple weeks so i'm gonna are you really? that. yeah oh dude, dude. Yeah, oh, man he's he'll rip into me because he and i he and because <laughs> there are some times where he and i got along great and sometimes where we did not we were together for four and a half months and that's a long time um wow. and i think if i was one of those missionaries that uh wrote every little detail or whine or complaint to president, then we probably wouldn't have been together for four and a half months. Um, and I'm guessing that he must not have done the same thing because I'm sure that he had whines and complaints about me as well. Um, uh, <laughs> he, he would harass me all the time because I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and I would eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch all the time. And he just like, you are going to die. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're going to die. You eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich all the time. Elder bear. You're going to die. You you're like, you got to eat something else for lunch. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? I get my, I get my vegetables at dinner time. I eat my cereal in the morning. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was so interested in health, healthy food that, um, he, it was hard for him to see other people make different decisions than him. Uh, at least when I was with him, he may have, he may have changed his mind, um, throughout the rest of the mission. But when we were together, like healthy food was a big deal to him. And I think that it became, it, yeah, it, it became a little bit of an obsession for him uh, later on. But um, but it was it was hilarious because he would give me a hard time about what I ate all the time. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you can eat your freaking gerbil food over there all you want, and I'll eat what I want to eat. Okay. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> we're, we're not we're not going to go into this anymore. Okay. <laughs> You 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 want to you want to question what I eat? We'll have a wrestling match and we'll see how that goes. In fact, in in fact, at one point we did have a wrestling match, and I don't know if Craig remembers this, but it was at the peak of uh, one of our frustrating times with each other. And uh, I got behind him and I did a rear naked choke and pretend and, and like was choking him out, and he pretended like he was actually passed out. 
and he just like lays down on the floor. And I got up and I was so frustrated that I kicked his arm out of my way as I walked to the kitchen to get a drink of milk. <laughs> as I kicked his arm, he's like, oh my, what the heck's wrong with you? Did you think that I was passed out? And I was like, oh, you're awake. Yeah, yeah, I did. I really did think you were passed out. <laughs> so, oh, something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> I was like, Elder Stratton, there's a lot of things wrong with me, man. <laughs> One of them, but I'm still with you. <laughs> oh my god! So uh, yeah, it was, it was Strat and I. We, there's a lot of times we, a lot of things we got. We had, one of the things that we agreed on a lot was um, that we both wanted to be out working all the time, which was helpful. We didn't have a whole lot of success uh, with our finding efforts, except for we we did get to teach um, a, a young man. Uh, that uh, one of a guy who worked for Umberto Gilardi, um, his name was Andy, and he's just a stud of a guy. Um, didn't end up getting baptized, um, but it was a pleasure to teach him and to see his progress um, through the gospel. That was just an awesome, awesome experience. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, and I know I talked a lot about Umberto on on my last one because uh, I, I love Umberto. He was just. Uh, he's awesome. And I, t- I could tell stories. I, I could, I mean, I was in air for six months. I could tell stories about uh, George Sharkey, um, brother Sharkey for uh, forever. I, I love his, he has so many assassin stories because he was, he was, a, he was, he was a Malayan scout. He was an assassin. He was uh, uh, in that, um, uh, the, uh, what is it? Uh, what's, what's the special forces for Britain? SAS. That's it. He's SAS. Um, and uh, he had, he has, he has some crazy stories, but we're, we're not going to get into all of that. But it was awesome, awesome stuff. <laughs> um, uh, you probably yeah. need to record those for posterity's sake, Bri. Oh, no, I, I absolutely will because I remember those very well. Like He got, he got stuck, stuck up in the Arctic Circle one time with a guy because they were supposed to uh, decommission a um, tracking system from the Russians that were tracking Ru- American subs underneath the Arctic ice. And uh, they did that, and the ship that was supposed to come get them was like stuck in the ice and couldn't come get them. And so the Russians deployed a platoon, and they had to, they had to avoid this platoon on this on this tiny little ice island for like days. And they were eating like the lichen on the on the rocks and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, oh my goodness. yeah, insane. He has so many cool, crazy stories, man. So many, but we're not gonna get into those. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of, oh yeah. So there's, so the, another interesting thing about air is that we had a, 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 a brother in the air ward, um, brother McLennan, who, uh, was interested in helping the missionaries teach more effectively. Um, and at the time, uh, I was with elder Stratton and elder cook was our district leader and he was with elder stout and kill winning. And, uh, so Cook, Cook and Elder Stratton would come down and do these regular training, leadership training sessions with Brother McLennan. Uh, and um, those things rubbed me the wrong way, Zach. <laughs> like it was to me, to me, it wasn't teaching leadership or teaching missionaries how to how to be more effective teachers. It was manipulation. That's how, that's what I, that's what I felt it was. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it, I, I was, I was less interested in those. And so I was more than happy to go out on exchanges with Elder Stout a lot and Elder Stratton and Elder Cook just ate that stuff up and they're going to change the mission and travel around and, and teach, teach the whole, the whole mission, these, these wonderful ideas about how to be better missionaries, um, through through the what what brother McClendon was teaching and just not 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 my style went hmm. wasn't wasn't feeling it um, oh and we also had a traveling missionary elder Matt Nelson uh, who's been mentioned a couple times he was he was he ate that stuff up too he was super excited about it um, uh, you know and and actually I think th- it was that kind of thing that gave me a real bad attitude toward leadership uh, in general um, I. I think I did so the um I don't know how to put this carefully. I did not like the idea of people jockeying for leadership positions in the mission. 
that mm-hmm. bothered that bothered me a lot. Um, and as a result, I think I kind of um, I kind of made it so that I was I don't I don't know I, I was less interested in leadership because of that uh, because of, of I was like you guys you guys are dying like so, some I met a lot of missionaries that were just dying to have leadership positions in the mission. And I was like, you guys can have them. <laughs> yeah. I guess I, I wasn't called to be a district leader or zone leader. So go ahead. <laughs> enjoy, mm-hmm. enjoy that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so. I completely agree with you because it's like, I don't know. I, I couldn't see myself as that person, like aspiring. You know, we yeah. use that word a lot on the mission. Oh, ah, yeah. Aspiring dogs or what? I can't remember what we used. Yeah. But nonetheless, those that were they were so caught up in how do I do these things to get there? And I was like, I don't care. Let me just do my job. And if it's <laughs> supposed to be that, then it will. Right. And in hindsight, I would have preferred to not be in leadership because there's so much more crap that you have to deal with, you know? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Anyway, so I was I was more than happy to go on an exchange with Elder Stout. So Elder Stout and actually and I spent a lot of time together before we actually because I, I go to Elder Stout after after Elder Stratton. Mm, but yeah. um yeah, but uh it was um it was it was interesting, especially with, with Elder Nelson being there. He would Elder Nelson really liked the um asking missionaries what kind of car that they would drive and he would uh he would extrapolate what kind of person that missionary was by what kind of car they would decide that they would want to drive <laughs> when he would do that when he would do that stuff zach like i was like so uninterested in these games that he was like uh, elder bear what are you what kind of car do you want to drive and i was like i don't know something rusty i don't care and he's like well you, you, you you'd be okay driving a, a rusty car to, to work like you'd allow that to represent like your family, yeah. I don't care, dude. <laughs> like, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, what kind of car would you drive? He's like, I drive a BMW because it demands respect. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, dude. <laughs> you and I are so different, Elder Nelson. <laughs> and this is this is not Kevin Nelson. This is this is a different Nelson. Yeah. But, uh, like, where was where was Matt Nelson from? Do you remember? I don't even remember. I don't I'll, remember. I'll figure it out. I don't know. Um, yeah. Elder, Elder Stratton and Elder Cook really got along well with Elder Nelson. Um, and I think Elder Nelson uh, was probably a great missionary. I didn't really do much with him. He was most of the time when he was with us, he was just doing that leadership stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was, <That's> interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, and I remember uh, it was Elder Nelson also also explained to me that um, that a rich man could do much more for the church than a poor man, and uh, that also upset me. <laughs> I was a uh, was not I, I was not giving into that that sort of mindset. Um, I, I I was like I, I I cannot imagine the Savior saying that someone who is wealthier than my father um, explaining to my father who does not have money that uh, he did less in the church because he didn't have money. I I can't see that happen. So your argument means nothing to me. (laughs) Very interesting. I may not have said those words, but I certainly thought them. (laughs) 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 But anyways, it was, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And so, um, yeah. uh, Then I went up to kill winning with Elder Stout. Uh, who I got along with well. Uh, he he actually, you know, we were out doing work and and doing stuff. He liked to sleep in in the morning, which was a little bit different than what I he, he liked. He liked having companionship study with his eyelids. Um, whereas, <laughs> 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 and I was like, and you know, I'm I'm just the guy that I, I just don't I just don't complain. And so I was like, whatever, he can do that. You know, and I think I had a, I had a lot of a, a lot of companions that um, uh, that may have had trouble getting along with other companions, and I I seem to always get along with them because I think because of that attitude, it's just like all right, you, you do that, man. Like just as long as it's not affecting our work, then 
I don't, I'm okay with it. Like you, that's your, it's your decision. I'm not in charge yeah. of you. Um, uh, but at the same time, there's times where I would get super riled up and uh, frustrated. Like maybe things would just explode. I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so like people are going to listen to this podcast, Zach, and they're going to be like, man, that elder bear is a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a logical uh, psycho. No, well, maybe, maybe some. Sometimes I'm like, there's a lot of times I'm illogical. So <laughs> I don't know. But uh, <laughs> Elder Stout and I got along really well. Um, uh, that flat and kill wing was horrific, like absolutely just disgusting, man. It's like that thing was so nasty. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was not interested in cleaning it. <laughs> Fair enough. And I was like, this place is a freaking disaster and it will take me the entire six weeks to fix. So I'm going to at least try to do some missionary work. <laughs> <laughs> that was my attitude. And uh, yeah, it was, it was funny, man. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and I, I talked about some of, the, some of my South's interactions. For the most part, we got along. There's some times where we got, we got into some fist fights. Uh, but it was hilarious because it was one of those like times where you like, okay, you get in a fist fight, you, you duke it out and you're like, oh, man, we're good. We're good. You give each other a hug, lift each other up off the floor, dust each other off, get your clothes on. Let's go work. I like, guess just one of those things. And, uh, and, and Stout and I got did, like, we did that. And so you, yeah, you got to get Danny on here because Danny and I, we, we, we got to see each other a couple of times after the mission. Um, I sold pest control out in California and, uh, I got to, I got to hang out with them a couple of times and, um, you know, some people, some people, they, they just, they take it, uh, some people take the easy road and some people take the rough road and Elder Stout's taken the rough road a few times in his life and he is still pedaling along and he's doing awesome and he's just a stud of a guy. Um, and he, he actually has a, uh, anyone who taught with him in homes of, uh, they, they could see that he had a massive heart. Um, and I loved seeing that heart. He was just, he was a gem of a guy. Um, and he had his own way of doing things and, uh, he had his own sayings, holy buckets. He'd always say that. Holy buckets. <laughs> I can't believe you ate that entire plate. That was huge. And I'm like over in the corner. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh goodness so many giant food portions that stout had done such a good job of making sure that he had so many appointments of dinner appointments um anyways um a few a few things i want to talk about is uh some of the zone leaders that i had um so i first had elder thomas and elder newcomb and elder thomas was awesome he's from south africa uh, he's another guy you need to get on here um, and Elder Newcomb was from, I can't remember. Oh, Mel, I think he's from Melbourne in Australia. Um, but anyways, uh, I remember going on exchanges with Elder uh, Thomas, and we went and taught this guy who Elder Hagger talked about, James Rankin, um, who got baptized. He was a super old old man, um, and he'd been investigating the church for forever because I remember being a greenie going on exchanges with Elder Thomas, and Elder Thomas was like, well, we've taught Brother Rankin pretty much everything we can. And uh, we're going to go over uh, Moroni chapter eight. And it's like, okay, cool. All right, Moroni chapter eight. And we get in there and he explains that to James. And James is like, Moroni chapter eight. That's the one about, I think, Waterman mentions it about uh, infant baptism. Is that correct? And he hadn't even like pulled up his book of words. I was like, what? And I was like, so I look at, I was like, infant baptism? What's he talking about? <laughs> I look at my church. It's like, Holy crap, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know that. And he takes this Book of Mormon that's like, he's read it like a thousand times. He's like, okay. Yep, and his hands are all shaky because he's like super old. Yep, yep, okay. Where do you want to start? And I was like, oh my goodness. How is this guy not baptized? He knows the Book of Mormon better than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's awesome that Elder Agar gets to talk about it and gets to, gets to help him get baptized. Um and it was, uh, it was really cool to be able to see that. And then uh, after Elder, uh, we had Elder Franz. And Elder Franz, dude, you got to get him on because that guy was a character. Elder Franz was, uh, he was just such a, a unique person. He loved his music. 
Um, he could play Indigata Navita by Iron Butterfly on the organ. <laughs> no way. Yes. Like, from, you know, like from The Simpsons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he could play the whole thing, dude. It was amazing. I, I remember going to a, a zone meeting and he would sit there just jamming on the organ. <laughs> what a chapel. And I was like, holy crap, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. And I can remember, oh man, I can remember he was talking with Sister, T with Sister Heat once and the zone leaders were supposed to be supposed to mail a key to the sisters and Sister Heap's like, uh, hey, we never got that key. And Elder Francis like, I sent it in the mail. And she's like, yeah, we never got it. Elder Francis, like, I, I got it. I got a, an envelope with a hole on the side. He's like, did you just put a key in an envelope? And it was a tithing envelope. It's like, did you just put a key in a tithing envelope and send it in the mail? And his elder friends goes, damn the day. Elder Newcomb told me that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just like, like everything elder friends said, it was like he was in a movie. It was amazing. <laughs> it's like that guy, he was such an interesting character, man. It was so fun. So fun to be around that guy. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Another another funny thing that uh, happened while I was in, in air. Sorry, going back to air. Is one time, one night, Elder Trainer and I, we get woken up at like 1130 at night with these knocks on the door. And um, so we throw on some shorts and a shirt, right? And we go and answer the door. And there's like six girls there. <laughs> and they're like, uh, yeah, we're looking for, uh, I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Manon, <laughs> Elder Manon. No <laughs> like, way. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> they're like, we're looking for uh, uh, Elder Manon. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. What, how do you know where he lives? And they're like, oh, we just do. <laughs> it's like, okay. oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy crap, what is happening? <laughs> It was we gotta movie. we gotta get that guy on the podcast. I know, right? yeah. I know you have to, dude, because he he served in air with Elder Friends. So. Oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, there's th that that flat man had a lot of crazy stuff happen. You know, Zach Brown. Zach Brown uh, went and defended this girl out in that same parking lot. Like he told me, he's like, he's like, you were your first area was air. He's like, were you st are you still on that in that flat on Moscow? And I was like, yeah, we were. And he's like, dude. I beat the crap out of a guy in that parking lot. And I was like, Zach, what are you? I was like, Ella Brown, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I, he's like, there's this guy out there. And he's like beating on his girlfriend. And I was an elder. I think he said he was with elder men. And I don't remember if he was with elder men as well. Anyways, he's like, yeah. And he's like, uh, he's like, I gotta, I gotta go out there and stop that. And my companion was like, no, you don't. And he's like, yes, I am. And he's like, and I went out there and I totally just trashed the dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dang, Elder Brown. All right. I was like, I guess. All right. Well, good job defending if defending the lady, the lass. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, no. There's, uh, apparently, there's some wild things that happened in that apartment. Um, so That's amazing. When you get Zach Brown on here, I want to hear that story again, Zach, because, uh, because <laughs> there's that sounded incredible. Also, we met some like less active members uh, down in one of the cities south of Air that uh elder elder brown and his companion at the time i don't remember who it was but they got in a fight <laughs> like a fist fight in her apartment <laughs> the companionship did yes so zach you got, you're gonna have to tell us man because because uh i heard this i heard this through her that it was you and your companion maybe it wasn't you maybe it was maybe she was wrong and it was someone else but uh but you you got you got to get on here and tell us some stories <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely sending this episode to zach absolutely specifically yes yeah Goodness. and uh yeah so um yeah i thought i thought he was he anyways um going back to kill winning with elder stout right <laughs> i'm going all over the place zach. <laughs> you're good man you're good <laughs> yeah i gotta i gotta check my notes here um let's see here Oh, that was okay. That that was the other thing I needed to tell you. <laughs> so I talked talked about how Sister Heap and I were like each other's like Jim Halpert from The Office, 
um, <laughs> one particular time, we were, I was with Elder Stratton. We were helping Fatih and uh, Celestia move their house. Like they're packing up all their stuff. And Sister Bogomolova and, and Sister Heap were there uh, helping him pack up as well. And um, we get to this one, like, tote uh, that <laughs> was like this this tote with the lid. And Elder Stratton's like, what do you want to do with all these? And he's like, why, why you got all these wigs for? And these there's like a ton of wigs and like these giant like like uh, knee high boots and like some other things in there. And Elder Stratton's like, what what's all this stuff for? And Sister Bogomol was like, oh yeah, what's that for? And I looked immediately like look up at Sister Heap was like, mm. and Sister Heap was like, like see, like we do exactly. It's like it's it's. it's, it's Lester was like, she's like, you, you, uh, and Fatih was like, he's like, oh, we need to get rid of those. He's like, we are not children anymore. And Celeste, Celeste was like, oh, but you, you want to get rid of all of you like some of those things, Fatih? And, <laughs> and me and Sister Amy were just like, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, Chris, Chris, I hope you, I hope you listen to this and I hope you remember that because it was incredible. It was just like it was so good. That that experience was hilarious because, to be honest, I don't know if Elder Stratton just hid things better than I did, or if he actually didn't know what was going on there. But Sister Bogomova, I think, had no clue what was going on. Sister Heap and I had a very clear idea what those what that box was. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing it was hilarious oh, it, was goodness. So, it was so amazing um anyways yeah so um let's see here oh yeah that's the other thing is just so another funny thing about sister heap is she loved music and she loved going to concerts and so we would oftentimes sing songs like uh like uh, we'd sing modest mouse we'd sing dashboard confessional we'd sing uh um, yellow card, like all that kind of stuff. And she'd be like, wow, how the you know all these cool bands? Did you go to any concerts? And I was like, no, I never went to concerts. And she was like, like, she was like, so unimpressed with that. It's <laughs> like, dang, all right, well, I'll get over my mission. I should probably go to a concert or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, just so you know, Krista, I've been to tons of concerts since I've been home from my mission because of you. <laughs> <laughs> because, because of that look he gave me <laughs> it was just so funny uh, i have to confess that i was the same as you brian when i went on my mission i had never been to a live concert and yeah. so i don't know maybe it was just a cultural thing like it wasn't something that my parents enjoyed or didn't like share with me but since i got married my wife loves live music and i'm like okay cool let's and we've gone to a lot of concerts too so yeah. we get we get it now but when i was a kid i was just like i'd rather just go run around with my friends that yeah. you know that wasn't as important at that point in time no same here same here but christy christy was a, a huge concert goer and, hmm. and so she was she was utterly unimpressed with my lack of concert going <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah um so uh, let's see here. What else I want to? Oh yeah. So when I was with, um, so being with Elder Stout was it was it was both good because we got along, but it's also tough because the work was not progressing at all when we were there in Kill Winning together. Like it was, it was zero. It was like fully dead. Um, and so I was living from P day to P day uh, a lot during that time, um, and I had amazing leadership in that area. Um, we had Elder Brownlow, who was her district leader. Um, with elder midgley uh for six weeks and midge and i got on so perfectly and we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit but uh and then we had um our zone leaders were elder hagger and elder newman and i love those guys um i remember uh, and so i was living p day to p day because we play we play football every day uh every p day uh and we play it like almost the whole entire day and i loved it um mm -hmm. and, uh I, I wasn't the greatest but i I, I had a lot of pride in the fact that I was often one of the first Americans picked when we would do picking teams. <laughs> so I had, a, I had a lot of pride in that. Okay. <laughs> but I you should, you should be, but that doesn't mean I was good <laughs> because I wasn't, but, uh, but yeah, it was um, elder Hager and uh, elder Newman. And eventually it was elder Hager and elder Grant. Um, and Elder Brownlow were huge, huge 
um, they made an Im Im amazing impact in my mission. Um, Elder Hagger would always like, oh, you all right, sunshine? <laughs> That's exactly how I know. You all right, sunshine? <laughs> I loved Elder Hagger. He was the best. <laughs> um, and, uh, and um, yeah, and Elder Newman was just, yeah, I, I loved hearing his testimony. Um, and I, I love seeing people who have uh, decided to change their life. I, I get so much more. Uh, I feel like um, when I hear them testify, uh, I, I, I feel more uh, from them. Uh, I feel like they have a lot of depth when they've come from different places uh, and darker places. Right. And Elder Newman had depth. And I love that. And it made it, it, every time he would testify, I would, I would feel it deeply. Um, and I remember being the first time playing football with him and seeing his tattoos. And she's like, Oh, wow, this guy's been places. Uh, and, and he still decided to come on a mission. I remember just being super impressed uh, with, with him. He was just, he was just such a charismatic guy. Did you ever serve around him, Zach? No, he was a little bit older than my time. Okay. At least I think so. Otherwise, I'm, it, I may have just been on the opposite side of the mission when he was there. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, so there's a, I've been a few people who have mentioned him that, um, like, so he smashed his face up at one point in his mission playing football, right? Um, yeah. And uh, so he had some pretty pretty profound miracles that happened during that healing process, um, allowed him to, to stay out on the mission. Um, and yeah, it's just, I, I, I would love to hear from him, uh, at some point. Um, I know that he's been requested multiple times, uh, and I don't know if, if this is his kind of thing, but, um, he, he made an incredible positive impact on my life. Uh, and one of, one of which I'll be grateful for forever. Um, we'll work on it for you, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the same with, uh, same with Elder Brownlow. I love listening to Elder Brownlow. Um, I went on exchange with him once and uh, a couple or obviously multiple times. And he, Elder Brownlow is the one that explained to me, uh, because I had, I had a really bad attitude toward leadership in the mission. Um, and as I mentioned, and I remember explaining that or mentioning that to him and he's like, that's, you got to get over that Elder Bear. And I was like, well, why? And it's like, that's, that's not what I'm called to do. And he's like, no, but you might be. And if you're not living your life in a way that you're not prepared for that calling when the Lord needs you, then that's on you. And I was like, hmm. I hadn't considered it that way. He's like, because the Lord might need you. And if the Lord's going to need you, then you need to be ready for it. He's like, eh, that doesn't mean that you should be aspiring for anything, but it does mean that you need to start getting yourself ready in case he needs you in that position. And that made a profound impact on me. It, it changed my, my perspective that, um, I wasn't, I will, I wasn't, I still wasn't going to be aspiring to any position, but I wasn't going to be actively trying not to get any leadership positions anymore, which is what I kind of was doing. Cause I, I just, it wasn't, didn't, I didn't like that. And so it, it didn't, I didn't feel like it was me. And he explained, he's like, yeah, but it might be, and the Lord might need you. He's like, and honestly, people who, who have that kind of mindset are usually, usually with, they don't let it go to their head, pretty good leaders. And I was like, okay. And so Elder Brownlow's counsel was, was, was powerful to me and, uh, and very necessary. Um, but I also remember being, <laughs> being on exchanges with Elder Brownlow once and he, uh, he had a really bad sore throat and, um, he was like, we, I think we turned in a little bit early because his throat was just killing him. And he's like, and he, he started, it was mentioned to me. He's like, all right, Elder Bear. So, oh, no, I mean, sorry, I'm trying to get his accent right. Elder Bear. So I heard about this Scottish remedy where uh, they take salt and vinegar and they kind of swish it around their throat. I think I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> it's like, all right, Elder Brown, let's, let's see how it goes. And I, I'm in the other room and I hear him like gagging and like puking into the, into the sink. And he's like, what the hell is wrong with those Scots? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what an awful And I can hear him like in between gasps. He's like, what is wrong with them? It's like, why would they do that to themselves? <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, Tom. 
It sounded like a terrible idea, but I was just going to let you go through it, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, and I got to hang out with Midge a lot. And Midge was just, he and I were just, we were two peas in a pod, man. And in fact, I went, I went back to, to uh, the Northern, Northern England and Scotland um, about six months after I got home from my mission and I stayed with Midge. Um, and it was just, just so much fun to be around him. I don't know uh, why we got along so well. I feel like for the majority of my mission, Zach, I got along better with the British missionaries than I did Americans. And I don't know if it was that, uh, that, or uh, that pod, of British missionaries there in, in the, um, in the Paisley zone with the zone leaders there in Irvin and Elder Brownlow over in, in, uh, in what is it? Where were they? Kilmarnock. And then we had, uh, we had Elder Cardenas and his companion up in Govan and we would just all get together all the time and we would just play like Elder Stout and I were like the odd men out. We were like the, the non, the non English, um, (laughs) <laughs> but it, I, I got along with all of them so well uh, um, from that time er, w- during that time that I just I don't know Midge and I just just hit it off real fast, um, and then we never served around each other the rest of our missions. Um, but we we kept in touch every now and then uh, until my Facebook got hacked. So if anyone's ever tried to reach out to me over the past year, sorry, my ha- my Facebook is hacked, and the dude who took over my Facebook account and changed my email is now Leo Richard. <laughs> So sorry guys, it's not me anymore. And I just got off of Facebook. So I was just like, oh, whatever. He can have that account. I didn't have anything important other than cool pictures on there. Whatever, psychos. So psychos out there. We gotta get you on LinkedIn. That's where a lot of people are too. Is that where a lot of people are? Oh yeah. All right. Well, anyways, yeah. So Midge, uh, Midge and I, we got along really well and it was just awesome. We we tried to do exchanges as much as we could. Uh we had a good time. But um I'm trying to think, is there anything else I wanted to, to go over that from that spot? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. So then after, after that, I got, I got moved to, um, to leaf in Edinburgh. Mm, yeah. Um, oh, real, real quick. Uh, so I got to, so, um, uh, Elder Cardenas took me out on my first day of the mission. Right. And he and I went chapping. And Elder Cardenas had gone through a pretty traumatic experience that night before that I wasn't aware of. He didn't tell me until later on my mission um, where he had, uh, he, he had saved someone's life um, in a very traumatic way. Um, and uh, it affected him for a long time. And uh, he mentioned to me later on in the mission that he and I go and chapping because we chapped for a little while. And <laughs> we didn't chat very long. And then we went back to the car and we mostly just talked. And um, I had no idea at the time that he needed that so badly. Um, he, he mentioned it later on in the mission where he and when he and I went on exchanges that uh, he needed that time that I, I had no idea what was going on with him or what, what had happened to him the night before. Um, but he needed that time to be able to just sit and chat um, mm and sing songs. Uh, we, we sang, we sang a tons of, tons of Oasis songs together <laughs> and just sitting in the car. Um, and I just, it was fun just getting to know him. I wasn't super, I didn't have a companionship yet. I didn't, I didn't have an area yet. So it didn't bother me to be able to sit there and, and just shoot the breeze with him. But I had no idea how, how important that was to him at the time, that mm. he, how badly he needed that. And he shared that with me later in the mission. So it was really fun to be around with him, uh, and where, when he was in Govan to be able to go up so often to, to play football with him up there. And then we get to, I get to serve with him again down in, in Edinburgh. He was in, uh, I think he was in my district. He was in Gala Shields while I was in, uh, well, when I was the district leader in, in uh, Leith there. Um, and so, but yeah, Elder Cardenas and I are just, hey, that guy's just awesome, man. I, I can't wait till you get him on if he, if he decides to come on. He was He's a stud, man. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, so I go with, I get with, to go with uh, Leith with Elder Campbell. I get called as the district leader. Um, we're, we're the district, we're the largest district in the mission, which included the assistance to the president um, and uh, included uh, two sets of sisters. And I remember President Breed sitting me down, Zach. He's like, oh, the bear. You got two sets of sisters in your district. You might want to just take some consecrated oil and 
put it inside a uh, a soap soap dispenser. You can just squirt it on your hands. New blessings. <laughs> so was like, amazing. I was like, what? And he's like, you know, and just makes this motion. He's like, he puts his hands up. <laughs> I was like, holy cow. Prison prince. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's amazing. It was awesome. <laughs> and so, uh, but we had, we had incredible system missionaries uh, during that time. Um, and we had uh, sister, uh, soon, or future sister Bradley. I can't remember her name. Crookston. Crookston. Thank you. <laughs> future sister Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, sister Crookston. We had um, sister Miller. We had uh, sister, um, uh, sister, oh, oh my goodness. Uh, sister McGowan and her companion at the time was. The sister who got on, who's this? Oh my gosh, she's gonna kill me. She was on here with Lizzie Kinney, Marin uh, Roberts. Roberts, oh my gosh, Marin, I'm so sorry if you listen to this. <laughs> sorry, Marin. But, so, Marin, Marin, and uh, Marin and Jade were hilarious together, um, because they, they would, they, there was times where they were like the best of friends, and there was times where they hated each other. <laughs> And Sister McGowan, I remember Sister McGowan calling me multiple times at night. I'm getting beaten, Elder Bear. <laughs> Sister Roberts is beating me. <laughs> She's so easy. Bruises on me arms. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, are you, I remember just like, are you, are you actually like, is she actually like harming you? Well, I think she's angry. I'm like, okay. Well, if you're not actually getting harmed, then we're okay. <laughs> like, they're a they're a hilarious companionship. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was an interesting district. I actually hated district leader in that area, Zach. Oh, I bet it was hard, dude. District meetings were the worst because the APs wanted to come to every district meeting. <laughs> I, I, I had that experience a couple of times. So I know exactly what you're talking about. It was not comfortable because you're just like, yeah. I am literally being analyzed at this moment in time. I, I pray that I did something right in my preparation for this meeting. Well, so the, the funny thing is I did not care a hill of beans about what I was judged being judged. What bugged me, Zach, is that I'd spent time preparing lessons and, and teachings for what I felt was ins inspiration for my district. And have that completely railroaded. Oh, geez. Like every single district meeting. Seriously? <laughs> Dude. All right. Call, call it out. Who were the APs that did that to you? <laughs> the, come on. I'm serious. This is, this is a therapeutic moment. Uh, and, and honestly, they're going to look back and be like, yeah, I probably was yeah. a total jerk about it. And I'll they can come on and refute it if that's the yeah. case. So, Elder Bradley? <laughs> elder nelson or nielsen uh okay. elder nielsen did not like me at all zach <laughs> he did not um yeah and uh and let's see here elder white so yeah <laughs> elder sariado was fine and, and elder uh elder rollo was awesome too um but uh yeah those those uh those guys really liked they really like to take over. And and it's possible, Zach, that it was just because I was doing a terrible job. That's certainly at least what it felt like. <laughs> I doubt that very much. Uh, so, it, yeah, it was uh, – I hated it. I, I hated it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man. That would be a lot of pressure, though, to know that they were coming on a regular, regular basis, you know, because ultimately yeah. what else are you going to do? You, I actually liked it better when President Reens came because they wouldn't talk nearly as much when President Reens was there. That uh, makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I, I liked, it was way better because I would actually be able to to do the things that I I felt like I was supposed to do at that time. Um, that was that was I, I liked it, and but he only came a couple times, so interesting. I, yeah, I hated it. <laughs> Crazy. Welcome. So, so it didn't help my uh, my impression of leadership in the mission at all, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> but outside of outside of that meeting, though, I got along with with um, 
uh, except for Elder Nielsen. I, I don't know what it was. Elder Nielsen hated my guts. Um, and maybe he didn't hate my guts. Maybe it's just the impression I got, but um, I don't know. He, he would, he would, he would let me have it often. And uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but oh, I think for the most part, elder, elder, uh, elder, yeah. For elder Bradley. And I, I, I remember going to exchange with elder Bradley. I really liked being with around elder Bradley um, outside of district meeting. Um, and so uh, same with, same with actually, yeah, I didn't really get to know Elder White other than just district meetings. So Elder White was, was a little bit tough to handle for me uh, in, during district meeting. So. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. it was good. But, um, but yeah, I can. So uh, I was, I was serving with Elder Jacob Campbell at the time. And it was really, it was, an, it was a weird dynamic, Zach, because Elder Campbell was double my age in the mission. And mm. I was leader yeah that became a problem hmm. very fast it was it's weird to say that the toughest companionship that i had on my mission from all of my mission all of my companions was was quiet elder campbell <laughs> it's weird to say that it but but you know what jacob jacob will probably say the same um he and i talked multiple times after the mission uh we, I mean, we, we both loved the gospel and we both wanted to do what was right. We both had very different ideas about how it should be done. And I think it was a little bit hard for him to have this new young hotshot come in and be the district leader as his companion. I think that was hard. And I, I, I can totally get that. Um, I didn't get it at the time. And so I was less patient than I should have been. Hmm. So no, that, that'd be hard though, because you're right. It's again, we use the word aspiring. I think the word we heard in like uh, one of the passed around songs was aspiring monkeys. But nonetheless, like it was harder for some of those older in the mission that either hadn't served in those leadership positions or just didn't think that that was ever going to be the case. They had a hard time, you know, yeah. with the fact that those younger than them were ahead of the curve, I guess. And I'm sure that was a difficult thing for him to swallow, but you know, it was what it was. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't you appointing yourself. It was a call from the president to do that. Yeah. But I, I think, so he had also been a district leader before. And I think that he had different ideas of, of how he would have done things. And I think it was hard to watch, have me watch me do things differently than he would do him. And I yeah. think that was, I think that was hard for him too. Um, oh yeah, that would be. Yeah. Uh, I know it certainly was for me. And we'll get to that later. <laughs> when I when I was not as when I wasn't his own leader, and, and poor Ar Archie Elder, Elder Archambo and uh, and Pilkington came in as his own leaders. Man, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, we we had very different styles. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah. So I was with Elder Elder Campbell for a while, and then uh, Big Mace came in, and uh, yeah. Elder Mace and I. Uh, got to work together and elder mace uh he also liked to sleep in in the morning um but i got to motivate him to get up by uh playing football with him in the morning i was like well, let's go do some exercise and so outside the flat and our, our flat in leith there's like this small little dirt dirt patch that we could play play football on and he would just trash me and he elder mace i mean uh, he certainly thought that he had a ton of skills and he, he actually did. <laughs> so, so I think he, he thought higher of himself than he actually did when it comes to football than, than he was actually capable of, but he definitely had skills. Yeah. Um, agreed. Yeah. And, and he could, he could, boy, he could let that ball rip when he kicked that hard. There's, yes, I, he I, could. I had multiple, multiple bruises from trying to play goalie against him. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was awesome. But he and I got along actually really well. Um it was with him that we went up to up to Dun Dunfermline for that uh for that coal that coal race. That's right, yeah. 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 And uh and I, I I did some some digging, Zach. It wasn't we we on, on our first uh on our first podcast we talked about that. We said it was like 140 pounds. It wasn't, it was like 112 or 114. Seriously, it felt like yeah. way more than that. Yeah, yeah, but it was still, it was still more than two thirds of my body weight. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and you did, and you did just fine. <laughs> yeah, um, 
but yeah, it was a, so I had a good time with Elder Mace. And one, one cool story with Elder Mace is that um, one time we were going to bed, it was like 1030 at night and our, we had our window open. So it was a nice evening. And uh, there's these two ladies that had got out from their church just down the road. Um, and they stopped right outside our window and we're talking about how uh, they were dissatisfied with uh, the church services over the past few, few months and how they feel like they just, they're just not getting enough. They're, they're just, there's got to be something else out there. And I was like, in bed, I was like, oh, he's like, Elder Bear, it's 10 30 at night. We're going to bed, man. And I was like, oh my God, it's right there, Elder Mace. We got to go talk to him. He's like, I'll tell you what, Elder Bear, you get yourself dressed. You go out there, you chat with him. I'll stay right here. I'll keep an eye on you through the window and I'll stay awake. I was like, done. So I got my through on my clothes on. I grabbed my Joe, Joe Smith pamphlet and I grabbed the Book of Mormon and I ran out there and we chatted. I chatted with him for probably an hour, Zach. Wow. Like it was, it was incredible. One, so there's, there's an older lady who is, uh, sorry, older lady. <laughs> She's probably older than in, you. Yes. Yeah, she, she was probably in her early 40s. Um, and then there's a, a younger lady who's, who's probably my age and she was from France. Um, and she was returning to France within like the next three weeks. And so I have no idea what came of this, but um, I taught the entire time. I gave him Joseph Smith pamphlet and I gave the younger lady uh, the Book of Mormon. And um, I gave him our contact information, which uh, I never heard anything back from them. I came back in. <laughs> I came back in the flat. <laughs> this is totally out. <laughs> I knew it. And I was like, all right, well. It's a good thing I'm doing the right thing because that could have been dangerous. But uh, but yeah, and it uh, so hopefully hopefully something came from it. But it was, um, I I hadn't had an overwhelming urge from the Holy Ghost to go do that before, um, in in the mission uh, or as strong as I did at that moment. I've I've had I had uh, smaller urges from the from the Holy Ghost. Uh, at times up, up, up to that point in my mission, but nothing that powerful. Like it was just like, you need to go. And um, yeah. And so it was, it was awesome. It was a really cool experience. So hopefully something come, came from that. I don't know, but I remember, I remember coming back in here and seeing how the place just completely stone cold out. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I think we're doing the right things. <laughs> I want to get to bed. <laughs> so that's, bed that's really bed. admirable though. Cause you know, you heard it and it was like, well, I don't care what time it is. It was the spirit telling you to go and do, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. But you got to be careful on who you share that with Zach, because if you share it to the wrong assistant to the president, they're going to say, you can't feel the Holy ghost. If you are at, because you were breaking mission rules. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Letter of the law, spirit of the law. There are, there is very different moments in life. Yeah, man. So I learned very quickly that that was a, a story that I was not going to share further. Uh, <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yes, you were you were out harloting yourself to these women. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, man. <laughs> Some things are just really important to people that <laughs> we'll let it be important to them, I guess. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so um then from from there we went uh oh yeah, I wrestled I wrestled Ella Patton in that flat and put a hole in the wall. <laughs> no way. A patent in size hole. <laughs> no way dude do you have a picture of such hole i i don't know if i do i might i might i have to check through my mission pictures i haven't looked through them in a while i need to go check but uh <laughs> or, or patty patty went straight in that it, it wasn't like we say hole in the wall it wasn't a hole but it was a patty sized dent um <laughs> and and all of the drywall was broken oh <laughs> <laughs> he awesome. just planted him right between the studs and it was yeah. just like he yes. put himself right there huh oh, it, was, oh, it was amazing I, it, i'm pretty sure it was a hip toss like so I, yeah i had a, had a solid underhook and he just tried to throw his weight into me and i just took his weight and just threw it right in the wall it was awesome <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so um but anyway so then i go from i go from there down to dal keith and i get released as district leader thank goodness um, and, uh, I get to go with elder Scanlon 
And uh, Elder Scanlon's this awesome dude from California. He's from Orange County, California. And uh, he is tall and he's thin. He's got dark hair. And he has had the most intense side part that I'd ever seen. <laughs> it's just awesome. And he's really, really, he loved his hair. Um, and uh, Elder Scanlon, he, so a funny story about him is that we on within the first week that we're there, he's telling me about these investigators that they have that are progressing. And we go there. And while I'm in the lesson, the mother of these uh, these people that, that these girls that we're teaching lights up a freaking marijuana doobie. <laughs> she just just throws up this blunt, just lights it up, and just starts going to town. And uh, I was like, "Oh, it's time for us to leave." And all the skin's like, "Elder Bear, what are you doing? Why did you? Why do we? Why were you so rude in there?" I was like, "Elder Scanlon, what are you?" What are you talking about, man? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going to teach a lesson while they're smoking marijuana in there. It's like, well, we we usually just get the get the lesson done and then get out. And it's like, uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who this we is, but I'm not part of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got out of there. And, uh, it was funny, and um, Elder Scanlon and I, uh, we, yeah, we we had some cool teaching. Um, we got to teach this guy, um, his uh, John Mullen, who I actually uh, I was GQing on the streets of Edinburgh um, at the time with Elder Mace, uh, and and talked to this kid, and then gave him Book of Mormon. Didn't see him again for a month, and then another guy uh, while I was on the streets later, he GQs into him. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I uh, Elder Bear gave me this Book of Mormon, and I read it, and I prayed about it, and I, I want to get baptized. <laughs> and I was like, hold on a second. Let me go get Elder Bear. <laughs> so they come and come to me, and I get to talk to him. And um, he's in, he's from, he was from Musselboro. And uh, then I get called to that area. So I get to finish teaching him and see wow. him get baptized, which is awesome. And so cool story is that, so Elder Haggard talked about his time in Dalkeith and now he didn't get along with the bishop at all. The bishop didn't get along with any missionaries at the time. Um, and I remember being at a ward function and um, it was Bishop Wilkes and uh, Bishop Wilkes was talking to the ward and, and stuff. And he was like, and we have this new missionary. He's just kind of a pip squeak. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, it's like, do you, do you wrestle Bishop? And he's just like, he's like, yeah, I wrestled all the time. I, in fact, I wrestled uh, on my, I, I can't remember. They, they, I don't know if they had like high school wrestling, but he talked about how he wrestled in, in a team. Oh, and I was like, well, we should probably wrestle. And he's like, I think we should. I think we should in front of the ward right now. Like, no way. And I was like, I think this is a fantastic idea, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop Wilkes is not a little dude, Zach. Bishop Wilkes was probably he's probably 210 uh like 58 210 and he wow. and it was he was he's a broad dude mm -hmm. uh, and i took it to him man <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> in front of the entire ward and no it, way but that night zach he asked us over for dinner and he and i became really good friends and so wow. elder Hagger, if you're listening man like uh it was cool to be able to work with bishop wilkes because during this, so this kid John John Mullen that I told you about that was getting baptized during his baptism, Bishop Wilkes went above and beyond to make sure that that baptism was happening because the guy who was in charge of the building maintenance was on vacation and he did not make sure that anyone had the keys to the font, um, and so we didn't we couldn't open the accordion doors, hmm. and so Bishop was like. <clears throat> We're not canceling baptism, not doing it. And he went to his house, got a crowbar or a pry bar is what they called it, and ripped one of the the hinges off. So here's here's the the on either side, right? And he's just like, all right, we just ripped all the hinges off on one side and accordioned it to the to the one side with the with the pry bar. Oh my gosh. To make sure that the baptism was gonna be happening and that that John's family could watch the baptism. Oh my goodness, that's what? amazing. That was awesome, man. Oh was, wow. Holy crap, Bishop Wilkes is going to town. So so it was really cool to, to see that to see that. And Bishop Bishop Wilkes was, I mean, he was just he was awesome. And and yeah, that he asked the missionaries to do some some weird stuff uh at times and he wanted to, and uh yeah, um, but uh that we didn't get any of that. We just we just got we just got awesome awesome Bishop Wilkes, which was really cool to be able to see uh, 
um, I didn't get any of those experiences that, that some missionaries had talked about in the past, which was really neat. So I, I loved it. It was really cool. I loved my time in Dow Keith. The, the people there were wonderful. Um, the Shields were amazing. Their son, Doogie Shields, who had been through a rough time. Uh, I was there during, while well, he had his hawk. He had a red tail hawk, which was really cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. Uh, yeah. So anyways, it was just... Just a wonderful place. I love Dow Keith. My, I was only there for three months. It was one of my favorite areas. Um, and I can remember actually one time Elder Scanlon was on exchanges with Elder Tovey uh, down in either the Gallus Shields or in Dumfries. I don't remember which one it was, Zach. But um, and they wrecked their car. And so the we go. President Brains called me up and he's like, uh, Elder Bear, I need you to go make sure that the car is all sorted out and get the tow truck out there and assess the same damages and make sure everything's okay. And I was like, president, I'm not the district leader. And he's like, Elder Bear, I need you to do this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> we'll get it done. <laughs> All right, president. <laughs> and so, so we go down there and um, we get there, Zach, and the car had flipped 12 times. Oh my gosh. And the, it was like, there was, I like, it, so it went off the road and there's, like, you'd see the, the messed up, the messed up, um, because I mean, everything's super green in Scotland, right? So that all the grass is like perfectly pristine on the side. And you can see that the grass is like completely like rutted up and disheveled, rubbed up, disheveled. And there's like 12 feet of untouched grass. And then like another 20 feet of disheveled, like rutted up grass, rutted up grass car. Oh and my I was gosh. Like, Holy crap. I was like, Elder told me how fast were you going? He's like, I was going the speed limit. It's like, oh, you were <laughs> 12 times going 40 kilometers an hour, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we, we I think we hit a, a, like a slick spot, a spot oil or something. It's like, no, you're flying through these twists and turns in this tw awesome twisty road going 80 miles an hour. And then you flip the car 12 times. That's what happened. And you see this whole blank spot. That's where you were airborne. And then you hit there and you rolled some more. And he's like, well, I don't really remember because I passed out when we were flipping. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Elder Scalin, do you remember? And he's like, yeah. Elder Bear, I kind of remember a little bit. He's like, okay, what What did it, like, you know, like is everything all right? He's like, well, Elder Tovey, he kind of just, like, slumped over. And I remember thinking, this is must, what it, must be what it feels like to be in a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Elder Scanlon, you are such a funny dude. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like, and then I, you know, uh, Elder Tovey, like when we stopped, he woke up really fast and said, I smell gasoline, get out of the car. So I got out of the car and I thought, my hair is messed up. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Elder Scanlon, what, what is happening? Oh my word. <laughs> so anyway, so we were sitting there and we waited for the tow truck to come out for like four hours, Zach. It was like pitch black at nighttime while, until that, that tow truck got there. And President Reen's like, Ella Bear, I need an update. And I was like, oh yeah, President, we took care of it. We just scratched off all the VIN numbers, lit it on fire and took care of it because it was it was totally totaled. And he's <laughs> go, Elder Bear, not really in the mood for jokes. Please tell me you're kidding. <laughs> it's like yes president i'm kidding i'm sorry that we're still waiting on the tow truck <laughs> goodness oh wow <laughs> so funny it's just like the pause after that and i let it sit that was the best part zach because i let it sit so i was like yeah this is sinking in <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was awesome oh goodness yeah it was great um and let's see here what else there's something else i wanted to say about ellis scanlon oh yeah ellis scanlon's girl or his, not girl his sister got pregnant while we were serving together and it really pissed him off because she she was dating this guy that he did not like and he's like i don't know what to do elder man i don't know how, like i'm not, i'm so angry but i don't know how to express that anger Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was like, I'll tell you what we're going to do. It's like, have you ever seen The Godfather? And he's like, no. And I was like, okay, well, let's, uh, let you write him a letter and we'll, we'll get it sorted out. And he's like, okay. 
<laughs> so he, he, he writes he writes this dude a letter and, and, and he also writes his sister a letter and, and i was like you're gonna need two different envelopes and he's like why ah. it's like just don't worry about it and we had this like toy from like madagascar from like a mcdonald like i don't know i don't know what it was some some sort of like crappy little toy in our flat and i cut the head off of the zebra and so it's this little zebra head and i put it inside the letter with his letter and then i I took a <laughs> I took a needle and I stuck my finger and I bled into the <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was like the horse's head in the sheets from the Godfather. <laughs> he was like, and so dude, he, he called me after after because I left his he called me when I went to um I, when I went to Glasgow. He's like Elder Bear. He's like, <laughs> they got the letter. <laughs> He's like, and his my sister's freaking out. <laughs> She's like, was that real blood? <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was awesome. So anyways, yeah. Every, anyone who listens to this, they're gonna be like, that elder bear's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now they might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness, that was a good time. That was a good time. So, um, then uh, I got to after that. Um, I was ready. I talk, I remember this was the first time I talked to President about um what I needed or wanted, and I was like, President, I'm I'm ready for for a companion that's like gonna fit my style. Um, I've had a lot of companions that have had different styles than me. Um, I had Elder Stout, I had Elder Stratton, I had Elder Campbell, Elder Mace, Elder Scanlon, and Elder Trainer, and half of them have uh, are, are at that point half of my companions had gone home early. And it's like I'm I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready to have someone someone work 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 my style. And he's like, well, he's like, we're ready to give you someone to work your style. He's like, how's Elder Farnsworth sounds? And I was like, are you serious? Yes! I was like so excited. Oh man, it was the best. So I got to go with Blake in Glasgow. It was awesome. Uh it was so much fun to be able to, to serve with, with Blake. And we had a blast. And uh there's been multiple people talk about our Christmas tree that we made, which was great. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good time. Uh what his yeah. side of that story was so good. Dude, it was great. I love <laughs> I, got, I love listening to Blake's <laughs> Blake talk. The, the funniest part that Zach that Blake didn't say is it's not like it's not like we cut it down at the base. We cut the top half of it. <laughs> the tree was like ten feet tall. So Blake, like, I like climb up and grab it and like lean it down. So Blake's sitting there like sawing it with the with the bread knife, and we just locked the top of this, this tree. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> It was oh awesome. My gosh. It was great. It was a great time. <laughs> so, so funny. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So I'm, I'm trying to think what else here. Oh, yes. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell, talk about is Elder Sprague and Elder Anderson. They're in they're in Edinburgh, Zach. Now, I apologize. Like, like I've got I've got so much content. I'm sorry this is gonna go long. <laughs> I got all I got time. You're good. <laughs> So, so, uh, so Elder Sprague and I got along great, um, which is, which is really cool because, uh, Blake Farnsworth and I, we, we talked, we would talk uh, every chance that we would get in the mission, right? Cause he and I got to get, got along really well, um, in the MTC. Um, uh, we instantly became best friends on the flight over to the MTC. And so we, we got to, to every time we'd cross paths, we'd chat and we'd talk about how life was in the mission. Um, and it's interesting because um, I know both hearing from from uh, Blake and from from Caleb uh, that their companionship they didn't really get along very well, um, but uh, I got along so great with Sprague when he was the zone leader in Edinburgh, and um, we were just it was, I don't know it was awesome. He was just I loved everything uh, that that guy everything that he did um, and his, his testimony was rock solid. I loved, I loved uh, that he would, um, I think I would, I would have got along with him less if I didn't, if it wasn't clear to me that his style of missionary work uh, that he had analyzed it properly um, the way that he did things. Uh, it wasn't, 
to me, it wasn't him being lazy. It was him analyzing what is most effective and going with that. And as a result of that, it was way more palatable, even though it wasn't the way that I would do things is way more palatable to me to be able to see like he has made this actually as a conscious decision and is not lazy. This is what he, he has found to be the most effective and he's going to do it that way. And because of that, it was like, it was, it was fine. <laughs> like I had zero problems uh, yeah. with, with, with his style um, because uh, he had thought about it so clearly and, and so, uh, so well, but anyways, I love, I loved being around Caleb Sprague, um, everything about him. Uh, we would quote, we would, we would quote a freaking home star runner all the time <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> we'd attack each other in the middle of the night Tribe door comes in the night this will make you laugh this is on my sem or oh, it's on yeah. my my preach my gospel i saw it on a car and took a picture of it you can see my camera in the reflection oh, that's <laughs> so awesome. i love it i love it <laughs> but yeah. this is this is my preach my gospel cover that's and so cool. that that is something that sprague and i talked about a lot too i think we did as well a little bit as oh well. yeah i'm sure i'm sure we did yeah yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, and then Kevin Anderson, dude. So he and I got to hook up a couple times after my mission as well. I got to go surfing with with Kevin and with uh, Elder Scanlon, Patrick Scanlon, when I was out in California uh, doing pest control. I went surfing with them a few times, and uh, it was awesome. I suck. They're good, and it was awesome. Um, <laughs> and uh, Kevin, Kevin was uh, he was such a unique dude, man. I I can remember I wasn't sure what to make of him at first. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, I just didn't know what to make of him. Cause I remember going on exchange with him and it was at the time when the mission home was trying to get rid of like all of like the church news and things like that. And he's like, Oh yeah. He's like the best thing to do is he's like, you go and you just put it in the chapin door um, or in the chapter before you, before you chat and, and then you knock into him. He's like, and what, what Kevin would do Zach is he would put it in the chapter and then he'd knock on the door. They would come to the door and he would, fight with the person at the door, get them so riled up that they look for something to like throw or, or like wave at him and they grab it out of the door, wave it at him and, like, rah, 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 and they'd slam the door shut. And then Elder Anderson would look at me and be like, yes. <laughs> and like walked down the road. I was like, no, no, Kevin, that is not a success. <laughs> like, <laughs> As opposed to just saying, hi, I'd like you to have this. <laughs> <laughs> like you would totally count it as a win but kevin was like he was just really confrontational at times and um uh, and, and he just he just knew what he he knew and he knew that what, what he wanted to to come across and he he did it in a different way than i would do it but uh but it was his way <laughs> it was hilarious but one thing really cool that i learned from from kevin though is i remember being on exchange with him and he was um in the other room uh with the door closed and he was and I, I remember him, he was praying and I could hear him and I, you, you, you know, you, you can't hear, uh, you can't hear clearly like bass tones. You can hear like mumbles. Right. And so I could hear mumbles and I would hear a pause for like two or three minutes and I would hear more mumbles and I hear another pause. And he did that for probably 20 minutes, Zach. And then he'd come out with his journal and his pen in his hand. And that changed the way that I prayed. Um, from that moment on, uh, it was clear to me that he was having a conversation and receiving answers through the Holy ghost. And that was really cool for me to witness. And we didn't talk about it. Um, but it was just, it was just something that I was able to, to notice, um, on that exchange. And it was just really, it was, it was special to me that, that, that made an, a lasting impression. Mm. And I love that. Wow. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so so the I, yeah, so I I just wanted to make sure I got back to Elder Sprague and Elder Anderson. They they gave a they gave a zone teaching once uh, during a zone conference, man, where uh, Elder Sprague like they were talking about mission jargon and how we can uh, talk to our investigators better um, without using like the jargon of the church, which is hard to understand for for investigators. And I remember Sprague, Caleb Sprague went into uh, he w- was basically announcing a basketball game. And he's using all this basketball jargon and it was just amazing. It was so, so perfect uh, what he was doing. And then uh, Kevin started to explain uh, um, surfing and he used all this surfing jargon 
And so people had no idea what the heck Sprague was talking about and no idea what the heck Anderson was talking about until they explained what they were talking about. And he's like, they're like, this, we do this as missionaries all the time. And I remember that zone teaching. It's like, okay, that was really cool. And it was just an awesome zone teaching. Anyways, anyway, that's just, just a random thought that came to my mind. Love uh, it though. Just, yeah. Just really cool dudes. It was just, uh, I, I loved the zone leaders that I was able to serve around. It was, it was awesome. Um, anyway, so I got to be with Blake. We had tons of fun. Um, we got to teach the Denmark family, which we'd mentioned before, which is just a special, special family. Um, and uh, I can remember Elder Brownlow and Elder Webb, Zach, were the assistants at the time. That's and they, right. came, they came to, to go on exchanges with us. And at the, so our, you remember our flat in Glasgow had those two queen size beds, right? Yeah. Those were, those were awesome. And Blake had the best alarm clock, Zach, that was like, it would, it would like slowly wake you up. You know, I hated that alarm clock. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I hated What's wrong it. With you? Because I like to just wake up, not the. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. Zach, <laughs> Blake's, Blake's was the best, man. <laughs> I remember you swore by that alarm clock. Dude. And, it's you, and you were good. like, isn't it wonderful just to listen to the music <laughs> and then the alarm goes off at the perfect time? And the thing that I hate about it is how long was it on? Like at least 25, 30 minutes? Oh, for a long time. And so for me, I was like, I can't sleep with with noise. At least I couldn't at that point in time. And so when the noise was on, my brain was awake, even though my eyes were asleep. And so it felt as if you had stolen 30 minutes of my sleep or 15 That's minutes or whatever it was. I did not like that clock. That is hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, so, so we had this giant queen size beds, right? And Elder Brownlow and, and El Elder uh, Webb come over. And, <laughs> and <laughs> we were talking. We were just like, so Elder Brownlow's like, well, uh, you, you don't have any spare beds, do you? And we're like, no, we don't. And he's like, hmm. Well, at least the White Handbook doesn't say you, you can't sleep with your companion. It says that, right? So we'll just make sure that we just pair up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there. So, yes. So Elder, Elder Brownlow slept next to me and Elder Webb slept next to, to Blake because we were following the white handbook that said, don't sleep in the same bed as your companion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> and, oh, dude. Okay. So I forgot. I forgot one, one story about, about Krista Heap. So Krista Heap said that, that she was – um, that she was quiet and awkward. And I disagree 100%. She was never, I didn't feel like she was a little bit quiet, but I never felt like she was awkward except for once. <laughs> so Krista, <laughs> the one time <laughs> we were, uh, we were doing, and uh, we were doing zone hoodies at the time. And Eller France was talking about, we were getting all our nicknames uh, for the hoodies. Cause they want to put the, the nickname on the back of the hoodie. Right. And uh, mine was Wee Bear, and everyone's getting their nicknames. And Elder, he was like, "Oh yeah." And Elder Webb, since he just left uh, the Paisley Zone, he said he wanted one too, and we're gonna get him one. And uh, someone was like, "Well, what's Webb's uh, nickname?" And he's like, "The Rug." And, and, and his sister Heap was like, "Why do they call him the Rug?" And Elder France is like, "Oh my goodness, Sister Heap, you should see his chest. It's like carpet. It's like so intense. Have you seen it?" And Sister Heap goes, "Not yet." Oh my god! <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> now, sister, sister, she's so she's quick witted. So I think she did that on purpose. Um, and and so everyone was like laughing and stuff. And she was beat red, but she was she was like actually a really witty person. And so uh, I think people took that as her accidentally saying that. But I think she said it on purpose just to be silly. But anyways, it was. Hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I love I love that 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 was his nickname. The yeah. rug. <laughs> the rug. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. So we're we're definitely getting in touch with Steven to get him on the podcast and ask dude, him about his rug. Him I loved Elder Webb. I was only around him like for a very like actually just when he was AP and I was and I was zone leader in Glasgow. Those I such few interactions, but 
everything that uh, all of my interactions with him were just fantastic. It was just that guy was just he was just amazing. He was awesome, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I got to I got to be with uh, with Blake. Um, he mentioned that we played paintball, which was hilarious. We got all our paintball guns at Burton's. The, that Burton's. oh really? Yeah. So so there was a missionary. I don't remember which podcast it was, but someone was like they couldn't remember what store it was, and I was like I knew immediately. I was like it's Burton's. The store that they can't remember is Burton's. Um, but, uh, yeah, they had these, uh, they had these paintball guns, like they, uh, for like, it was like 15 quid or something like that. And, uh, and so we just, we were like, um, Zach and I brought our Blake, Blake and I bought them and it's like, Hey, uh, we should probably encourage the rest of the zone to buy these. And he's like, that's a great idea. <laughs> so we told everyone to go to Burton's and buy them. And we just bought them all <laughs> and we went and played. It was awesome. And I, I wore a, uh, a child's stormtrooper outfit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was awesome. <laughs> it was clearly too small for me, but I was I was wearing it, man. It was just too awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. It was fantastic. So uh yeah, we had a good time with uh with Elder Farns within but my 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 time with him was short, unfortunately. We only got and actually, it, well, it wasn't that short. It was just, it felt short, but, uh, we, we did play one, one of the activities that we had with our zones, cause we would do by zone activities. So we would combine with the Paisley zone all the time. Um, cause they weren't so far away. And so we get together and do things and we played steal the bacon one time with a, a giant exercise ball that I'd bought. Um, and so we'd put it in the middle and we'd just line up and we'd have some, the people who didn't want to play would call out numbers and you would run. And I, I explained, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's kind of, I mean, you, really there's not very many rules. You just want to get it past your line. And so we would just go and just like smash into each other. Oh and gosh. dude, it was, it was brutal. It was awesome. <laughs> and I can remember, I can remember like just, like I learned quickly. It's like, okay, if they call multiple numbers out, I could just be a prop. Uh, I don't know what they call that position in, in England. Um, but it's, it's a rugby position here in, in America that is called the prop. I don't mm. I, They might call it the same name in, in England, but I don't remember anyways, but a prop, what a prop does is when someone gets down, the prop goes over and like drives the people back to make sure that the ball can get, get put back. And so I was like, I'll just be a prop and I'm just going to just dive over that ball and just smash into their, their, their group while my team gets the ball out. And so I started doing that. <laughs> it was just killing people. Zach. It was just like, just full on brutality. And, uh, and elder McBride decides that he's going to take me out. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. Like I'm done with elder Baird, like smashing people. Cause I'm pretty sure I got him pretty good. And Elder McBride comes and he takes me out. I was totally unprepared for that. And I like limp over to the side and Lizzie Kenny's like, Elder Bear, you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, Lizzie. She's like, what happened? And I was like, ah, Elder McBride cleaned my clock. And she's like, uh, Elder McBride? Are you sure? We're, we're talking about the same McBride? And then McBride walks up right then and he's like, Sister Kenny, just because I like fashion doesn't mean I don't know how to hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> totally took me out. And uh, yeah, and um, so we had these these awesome activities. And then Elder Farnsworth goes, I get Elder Poland. Elder Poland's just he and I get along perfectly. We continue these crazy zone activities. Um, in fact, we uh, we had one zone activity where we were, it was another buy zone activity. So we had both zones going um, and we had, uh, what was it? Oh, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, that's what it was. So um, we were playing capture the flag and they, what they did, they played capture the flag differently there where they would tie straps around your arm. And they were like, okay, so mm. when someone pulls that strap off, then you're out if you're on their side. And I was like, dang, no one's getting my strap off. This is going to be great. <laughs> so, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go to town here. Like, no, no one's going to stop me. This is going to be great. And so, like, I run straight for the flag. And then I see, like, a whole crew of their people running toward our flag. And I was like, mm, I should probably stop one of them. And so I run up and I pick off one of the ones in the back who is poor Elder McBride, Zach. <laughs> I just 
I, I, cause I was chasing him down and I was like, you know, I could, I could try to like reach for it and like grab it or, but I'll probably miss. So I'm just going to take him down. <laughs> and I just, just tackle this guy like <laughs> hard Zach. And, and we, he just lays there face down. And I'm just like, hi, I got your flag, man. You're out. And he just continues to lay there. And I was like, Cinder McBride, you all right? And he's like, I think so. And he rolls up and there's a rock underneath his face. He has blood pouring down his end and his two front teeth have been shattered. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How did I not hear about that? Dude, it was That's crazy. It was terrible. I felt so sick to my stomach. Like it was the worst. It was so bad, Zach. I hated it. So how did they, they get fixed? Did he just go straight to like a surgeon yeah, so, or something? Yeah. So um, his zone leaders took him to the dentist and they had him fixed up. And I think actually uh, for uh, what is it? What is, is it? Marcus? Marcus McBride? Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. So Marcus, if you're listening, I'm still sorry because I'm pretty sure you had lifelong teeth dental issues there. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. It was, it was, it was the worst. Self. I'd I, I like, uh, actually, it, like, it makes me sick to my stomach just talking about it because I felt so bad. Oh my gosh, it felt so bad. So I think they they did some sort of uh, reconstructive surgery at the time, but I'm, uh, I think, I, when I went back to Scotland, uh, when after I got home. I got to talk with him and Elder Petty, who were the zone leaders at the time. And he mm -hmm. mentioned that he's like, yeah, we did. He, he told me that they did some rounds of, of surgery, but he's going to have to have more when he gets back to the States where they're going to have to fix things better. It was bad. Oh my gosh. It was the worst. It was the worst. And you, it gets worse, Zach, because the the rest of the day, like, so Sister Kenny gets, uh, falls and slices her hand open. Um, and she's, it's, it's bleeding down and stuff. And so she's like, has a rag on it. And, you know, sister Kenny had the attention of a lot of elders often. Uh, and so there's a lot of missionaries around her as she, not that, not, not to her own doing, but just, that's just the nature of how it was. <laughs> she she yeah. never sought out that attention. She just happened to get it. Um, anyways, she she was sitting there like holding and she had a ton of elders around her and they're like oh what happened what happened such kenny and she looks up at me and she gets this devilish twink in her eye and she's like elder bay tackled me and i had nothing to do with it <laughs> but she knew what had just happened with elder mcbride and she thought she'd have a laugh <laughs> and i was like what? <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> Freaking Lizzie just throwing me under the bus, man. And all the elders are like, <laughs> they have like, like, these death stares, like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like, first Elder McBride, and now poor little sister Lizzie Kenny. Like, what the crap is wrong with you, Elder Bear? Like, that's what everyone is going, what's going on. <laughs> heads. And Elder Streeter standing next to me, which, by the way, you got to get Streeter on here. But Streeter was like, he leans over and he's like, the hilarious thing is, Elder Bear, is that no one's going to believe you when I try to tell them that it wasn't you. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, freaking Lizzie Kenny. Oh. Streeter yeah. is one we're working on. He was in my MTC group and he served with Jack. So, okay. in, in time, we'll get him. Good. Because I, I love Streeter. That guy was, he was just, oh, he was awesome. Um, and so, yeah, anyways, uh, I was in with, um, Elder Poland, I loved Elder Poland. Um, Elder Poland had some rough family stuff go th go on when I was with him. Um, his dad left his mom. That was really, really challenging. Uh, oh, yeah. And um, being able to to be with him and see him continue to to do what he knew was right at the time was so inspiring, Zach. Um, it was just awesome. I, I love Elder Poland. He, it was awesome. Uh, yeah. And then, um, I see here. Oh, I forgot to mention Zach that, uh, the time that we went up to, uh, Dundee for, for the G8 summit when I was in Edinburgh. So we, they oh, evacuated yeah. all the missionaries out of, out of Edinburgh to go up to Dundee. That's where I met Elder Vertigum 
and Elder Ver or Ver Verdechen, uh, Elder, he uh, that's that's where apparently that story came up where I was afraid to wrestle him because of a dream I had about actually killing him. Apparently, I, uh, I have zero memory of that story, which is hilarious. <laughs> zero memory. That was and, amazing. And and the funniest part is that because I didn't serve around him at all the rest of my mission. It was just that time when I was in Dundee for that G8 summit. And so, uh, so I was only there for a week and we were staying with the zone leaders or I, I don't know. I don't remember if it was the zone leaders. I know Sprague was there. Um, I don't remember who else was there, but I can tell you while I was there, Zach, there was a missionary and I, I know that you're going to want me to name names. I'm going to refuse to name names. Ah, oh, come on. I will refuse. There's Say what they did first and then we'll talk yes. about it. Okay. So there's a missionary. <laughs> there's some there's some, a group of girls that are walking down the street and he opens up the window and he yells out the window show us your boobs <laughs> and i i lost it man <laughs> like that that missionary got a piece of my mind and and it was it was sad because the, <laughs> that missionary and i had served around each other before up to that point but never with each other and I let him have it like hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was just, I was so shocked that that would go through his head. <laughs> it was mind blowing. <laughs> like, Oh boy. I remember saying, I was like, do you not realize that like, those are people live here? They know who lives in this flat. Like what the crap is wrong with you? What are you thinking? Like seriously, man! Like, oh my gosh! Like, I was—I I probably did not use very kind language. Mm. I have to tell you a random coincidence. So when when Kevin Vertigem was giving the story about you and you killing him in your dream, yeah, you called me when we were recording that. So you your <laughs> ears were burning. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I kid you not, I'm having this conversation with Kevin and all of a sudden my phone rings and I'm like, how in the heck does he know that he, that we're talking about him right now? It was unbelievable. Crazy side. <laughs> anyway, awesome. I just had to share that with you. That's awesome. Oh man. Yeah. So yeah, so then Elder Poland, so Elder Farns was left me to go AP, and then Elder Poland leaves me to go AP. Um oh another funny story about Poland. So he and I we, uh, there's a less active member who wanted us to come to her flat and kind of, um, she's like, just, you know, just make sure that the flat's okay over the holidays. I'm going to be gone. And we're like, okay. And she's like, also I loaded up the freezer with food and all these other things. And, you know, there's DVDs and, uh, there's a PlayStation you guys can, you know, do that during the holidays if you have nothing else to do or whatever. And I, was, and I were like, yeah, right. We're not going to do any of that stuff. We totally. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's so uh, one one time we were coming home because we we were uh I don't remember what game we were playing. I think it was Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but that is exactly what was in my mind before you said it. I was like, he's gonna say they're playing Grand Theft Auto. Oh Dude, my gosh. Oh, it was it was hilarious. Uh, so yeah, and we and we were zooming home because we were like we're like we're past curfew. We gotta get back home, and we were like flying, flying fast, Zach. And we get we get uh, one of the one of the uh, speed trap cameras took a picture oh, of us. No, dude, Zach, it was probably so it was it was like it was like probably Christmas Eve, I think, because um, it was one of those holidays where where we where you're not supposed to be out doing any s significant missionary work, right? Um, it was it was like way too late say it <laughs> it was probably midnight uh, oh. <laughs> and, and Poland was like losing his mind he was like <laughs> oh, yeah. person's gonna get that he's gonna get a place he's gonna know that we're out of midnight and I was like it'll be fine I'll pull it it'll be fine <laughs> you and I are not the problem missionaries it's gonna be fine. We're gonna be okay. He was like, "No, no, it's not." And so when we got called, because we get we get called early um, for for the missionaries who are going to the office, you get called early. And old was like, "Elephant, I know, President knows." 
<laughs> then he gets called as AP. He's like, <laughs> he's like well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny it is hilarious i was gonna tell him i was like i was i told him, i was like you know pulling like it, if they are calling and they're gonna say what the problem was i was just gonna be like yeah i i'm not allowed to drive sorry not me <laughs> 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 I, was like, I was just gonna throw you fully under that bus pulling <laughs> but um oh, gosh. yeah it was awesome before i had pulling i got you my lovely lad that's true yes we had a blast. The Dude. memory that, that I found in my journal is, do you remember how I showed up? And I don't think I had shaved for maybe two weeks. That's right. Because you, you were, was it Orkney or, or Lewis? Yes. I was on Orkney okay. and I was just like, we're not going out. So I just didn't shave. <laughs> and the funny thing is prior to my mission, I could, I could grow like a patch here and there. And it was lucky, but I was a very diligent missionary and shaved every day. Because that's what we were asked to do. And I was just like, wow, I got some serious growth here. Like, it was Dude. pretty amazing. But Me too, man. I, I, can grow, I can grow a full beard in like two weeks, man. It's all white now. But it's yeah. all right. <laughs> it, it, it looks good on you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we, we, had a lot of, we had a lot of fun. We ran around. We had so much to do. And the thing that I was looking at that was really interesting on the night that I joined you is I wrote I was tired. And I said... I begin a new adventure that will help me through the rest of my mission tomorrow. Because I was so excited to just learn from you and to be in a, because honestly, I wasn't a, the zone leader. I was just the tag along. I was, I was really there to make sure that you had a companion and that was all it was. And then I went on, I was just reading, I went on an exchange to Hamilton where I ended up serving later, which was really cool. Um, but, you know, it was just a great time for you and I to have a lot of fun. We had similar styles. It was easy just going around, doing things together. One of my lasting memories from Glasgow was I remember we went to give a blessing to a woman. And I don't remember who it was. Maybe I wrote it in my, in my journal. I'll have to find it. But I'm in there and I'm like, she's going to ask Elder Bear to give her the blessing. And... She didn't. She asked me to give it. I think she said the biggin. The biggin. <laughs> <laughs> and so I gave her a blessing. And it was one of those moments where I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter how much I know about her. The spirit will tell me what I'm supposed to tell her. And because, you know, you have those moments where you, you do contemplate things that may go through your head when it's time to give a, give a, a, a blessing to someone. But that was a unique experience. And, uh, no, no, we just, we had fun. It was nonstop fun, nonstop business. I think yeah. we chapped some high flats while we were there. So you gave me that Glasgow experience, which I'll never forget. That was just insane. But uh, yeah, when, we had a lot of fun. We, when were we together, Zach? Do you remember? It was right before Christmas in uh, 2005. Okay. Did, so uh, was, it, were you there? Were you with me for the 5th of November? No, I, I, did, I got there, my date's right here. Um, I got there on Saturday, the 10th of December. Okay, okay. And then I was gone like two days before Christmas. Gotcha. So that was our two weeks. Gotcha. But yeah, it was awesome. It was it was great, man. It was great. We uh, Do you remember trying to bake cookies? <laughs> I completely forgot about that. <laughs> 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 yeah, because we we put too much flour in it, right? Oh and they were gosh, they're freaking concrete. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to bake cookies. Or the, was it? It's for members, I think, right? I think it was. Like, was it? Was it? Was it, was it my cookie recipe or something? I think it was yours. Because I and I completely didn't give two thoughts about the change from metric to oh, you know gosh. American. Yeah. I was just like. Why are these, these taste like loaves of bread? There was just so much flour that we put in them. Yes. And I was like, uh, okay, that makes sense. I, I forgot about that though. That's hilarious. You remember what we did with them? We skipped them on the, on the, on the river, right? The stream <laughs> at the back. <laughs> We're like, you can't eat these. They're just so bad. And so we just went out one night and just skipped them on the, on the, on the river. 
gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't I that was that was way too funny. Oh Dude, my gosh. Oh, so good. No. We had so much fun. It was yeah. just it was nonstop because I think we at that point you had Spring Boy and Julian Avenue, right? That you were yeah. you were overseeing. So mm -hmm. there was always something going on. Yep. Yep. And Elder Pullen mentioned that he and I missed, missed the service at Glasgow in the Julian Ward. <laughs> Remember, because we got the times wrong. <laughs> Oh those, those members must have thought we were such deadbeats, dude. Like, like, missionaries come walking in five minutes after that. I mean, what are you going to do? If you, get, I mean, it's an honest mis mistake, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was. It was just. It was a blast having you there. It was. We had so much fun. And then uh, I had Elder Pullen. And then after Elder Pullen, I got Elder Bird, which was right. Elder Bird was great, um, and. Uh, there it was it was interesting because i had i had long companions up until that point and so it was weird that it was to, to have like a bam 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 you know so i yeah. had uh yeah so um and pulling for six weeks and uh or you for two weeks pulling for six weeks and bird for six weeks and my last companion for six weeks but yeah bird and i we had a good time we continued the uh the buy zone activities um we continued to have a lot of fun with with uh, the other zone and I'm trying to think of some things that we'd mentioned. Can't remember with Elder Bird. I do remember um, we had Elder at the time the tra the Elder Chris Christensen, Paul Christensen. Paul, oh, yeah. He was he was one of the APs at the time, um, and uh, I think he was traveling. AP because it was Poland and Farnsworth and it was Paul Christensen and someone else were traveling. I think and it was uh, Craig Rasmussen. Was it Craig? Okay. But we had them come and stay in our flat and our new, we had a new flat. Poland and I got a new flat in, in Glasgow, which made me sad actually, because the previous one was awesome. <laughs> the new yeah, one was, it was. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we got the new flat and, um, and so, yeah, as, as our lease was up on the other one, the, but the other one was just so good. But this this one this one was meh. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was, but uh, it was closer to our area, which was which is a lot better for us in 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 general. But I remember Paul coming in, and Paul destroyed our toilet, Zach. Like <laughs> no, dude, Zach, he annihilated that toilet, and just left. What? He didn't even plunge it himself. <laughs> he no. just left it. So, so I know Paul that you are an awesome missionary, but boy, that changed my opinion of you. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's amazing. Dude. Oh my gosh! Come on, man. <laughs> Was it the type of thing you just didn't know the damage he had done? It was like throw a grenade and walk away. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, it, the The problem, Zach, is that the plunger was wet, so he clearly tried, and he just decided to give up. <laughs> Jeez Louise! Yes. So, oh my I was, word! I was quite upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. So That's then, um, amazing. yeah. So Sean, Sean, and Sean Bird and I got along super well. Um, I loved, he was such a clear teacher and a clear speaker. Um, and, and it was obvious to me that he was going to have a very successful life, um, if he chose to. Right. And so, and, uh, I haven't kept up with Sean at all. Um, so I, I so totally fully suspect and have all the confidence in the world in that guy. Cause he was, he was just a joy to, to work with. Um, just really fun, uh, and he clearly cared about the people that he taught, and it was a lot of fun to be with him. Yeah. Um, and then after after Sean, uh, I got uh, I think they they whitewashed the the zone leaders area, um, and they put in Pilko and Archie, and they had me and uh, Elder Snyder. I was training him. But the cool part, the funny part there, Zach, is so as, as zone leaders, you try to uh, sort out moves and everything, and um, you're, you're coordinating with your zone and 
some t- in most of the time you try to coordinate with other zones to try to make sure that you're coordinating missionaries to go in the same place um, at the same time to make sure that everyone gets companions, right? Mm-hmm. For some reason or another, when I went to the mission home to train, Lizzie Kinney was going to the mission home as well. I, I don't remember if she was training or if she was just um, moving there. I think but she was training. I, yeah, she was training. Okay, so she and I were on the same bus and there was no other missionaries there. And we're like, okay, well, we'll just, we, we sat down uh, across the aisle from each other and she's like, ah, let's go up to the, to the second level. It's, it's more fun up there. And I was like, okay, cool. We go up to the second level and like, nobody's up there. We sit on each other, each other's aisle. We just chat the whole time down to Edinburgh. And she was like showing me all these pictures. And she's like, Hey, out of bed. At one point she's like, I can't, I, I can't just keep showing you my screen all the way across the aisle. Just come sit over here next to me. And when Lizzie Kenny tells you to do something, you listen. Yeah. So, it's like, uh, hmm. yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, so I went and sat next to her. It was like, all right, well, we just sat the whole time and chatted the whole time. It was a lot of fun. That's um, awesome. It was, it was way cool. Uh, but it was, it was kind of hilarious because it's just, it's just one of those, because you're like awkward <laughs> at the same time, but it's hilarious. It was a date. Uh, well, no. Just say it. <laughs> it was really funny though. You um, and Lizzie were on a date. Whatever. It was a, it was a bus ride date. It's all it was carry on. <laughs> Nothing romantic. It's all. It's all good. It was. It was a great time though. Was, I remember thinking the whole time, it's like, man, what? What zone leaders figured this out? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I was one of the zone leaders. <laughs> I just had no idea that Lizzie was going to be on the same bus. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, yeah, so it was we went down there, got to it was my first time training, which was really cool. Um, got Elder Snyder. He was from uh Utah, somewhere, where was he? I know he went to Weber State for college a year uh, before he came out on his mission. Can't remember. He was from some podunk area in Utah. <laughs> but he was a falconer as well. Um, so he had a red tailed hawk and a falcon that he would go hunting with in the mountains which is really cool. So Hmm. it was was awesome. Dexter Snyder was his name. And he, uh, Syracuse, Utah, Syracuse. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Middle of nowhere. (laughs) It's not anymore, but it used to be used to be. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, he was, uh, he was just a really, really cool young kid and he was super excited about the work. And I can remember getting on a bus and um, m- one of my problems, Zach, is I, I get the minute I get on a bus, I pass out if I'm not talking. And so <laughs> there's times where I just would pass out all the time. And so I was like trying to stay awake all the time on the bus. And I remember being on the first bus ride with with Dexter. And he uh, there's this guy who was sitting like four rows in front of us. And Dexter still talked in his American voice because uh the Scots always made fun of an English always make fun of Americans for how loud we are. Right. Yeah. And I, and I had no idea how annoying Americans were until I served in Edinburgh and got to be around Americans on a regular basis who were freshly from America and like, be like, Oh, elder, how are you? It's so very nice to see you. And like, <laughs> it would like, like I would cringe. Like, <laughs> and so it's like, golly, is that how everyone hears us? Like that is awful. Like, how can people stand it? <laughs> and so, um, anyway, so he was still fresh out, fresh from, <laughs> from the U.S. and talked in his loud American voice. And he, there's one guy sitting four rows ahead of us. The whole other bus was empty. And he's like, hey, Elder Bear, I'm going to go talk to that guy and share the gospel with him. <laughs> I, can, I can see the guy in front of us. And his shoulders just go. <laughs> I was like, go get him, Tiger. You got it. <laughs> I let him go talk to him. And he goes back to me. He's like, he's not interested. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> it was so awesome. I didn't want to turn, I didn't want to trounce out that greeny fire, though. I loved the greeny fire. And so I was, I was yeah. all, for it. I was all for it. And so, um, I was like, oh, shoot, well, we'll get him next time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I can remember getting off that same bus. And when we come off, there's a guy in downtown Glasgow sniffing a, an aerosol spray. I don't know what it was. 
screaming at the wall of some building in front of him and headbutting it every now and then and then snorting this aerosol spray and then sn- s- slamming his head against the wall. And Dexter's like, what is happening? <laughs> it's like, it's like, this is Scotland, man. This is how it goes. We're in Glasgow, downtown city center, my friend. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. what a shock! Oh, it was so different from from where he was from. It was crazy. Uh, so yeah, it was yeah, it was good. Um, but uh, we had we had a great time. We got to teach the new member lessons for the the Denmarks, um, and uh, got to see him, you know, kind of learn how to do missionary work, which is a lot of fun. Way more fun than I had thought it was going to be. Mm. Uh, I had actually, I actually always wanted to train, um, and it just never came up until my last six weeks. <laughs> so, wow. so it was, it was awesome to be able to to have him, and uh, and and it kind of, it kind of sucks, Zach, because um, the rest of my mission was serving around people I kind of knew or or was familiar with. Um, after about six months of my mission, like I started to get to know everybody, right, and. Um, it was it was hard to be with someone for six weeks and then leave and just be like, all right, well, good luck, man. We're out of here. Like, I, I'm not going to be able to see you progress further than than this point. And that that actually was surprisingly hard on me yeah. uh, because I wanted to see what what Elder Snyder, what powerhouse he would turn into because he was going to turn into a powerhouse. <laughs> and yeah. So, yeah. Um, but. I- I can tell you from my experience, I spent some time around Dexter later on in his mission. He was a stud. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome guy and a great missionary. Yeah. He's a good man, man. And his, his parents two weeks into his mission decided to, to get a divorce. Oh my word. Dude. It was the worst. Oh, was, that's so, so sad. It was awful. Um, we get down there. Uh, we we're sorry. We go to the, down to the mission home so that his parents can talk to him. Um, he has no idea what's going on. The president just calls us and says, "Hey, I need need you and your companion to come down to to Edinburgh um, tomorrow." And I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." So we go down there and we get outside the office of President Vreens, and I've never heard President Vreens yell at someone before, and he was letting Dexter's ha- dad have it, like yelling. <laughs> wow calling him a coward calling it like it was he was he was not careful with his words um at this point he was so upset uh and it was a testament to me of how much president reigns cared about dexter like it was clear that yeah. uh he was president reigns was worried about how this would impact his mission um and frustrated at Dexter's parents because Dexter's parents, they, they had, they had come to this conclusion long before he was leaving on his mission. Yeah. They decided that it would be best if he would, if they did this decision after he went, after he left. So two weeks in, they make this decision and, and, and uh, it was, it was painful. Oh, my but, gosh. Yeah. And so, so there was a second companion that I had in that parents split while I was with them. Yeah. Crazy. And so uh, we, we just got to work, man. Uh, and, and he was awesome. We, we'd sing some green day songs together and he would teach me some new green day songs <laughs> that, that I didn't know that they'd come out within the last two years. <laughs> and then we'd sing those. <laughs> and so we would, we would, I mean, I was just, I was one of those guys that I want my companion to feel comfortable so that we could get the work done. and. And so even though I wasn't always, I wasn't huge on listening to music or, or, or singing music from home, it wouldn't be like my first choice, but I did it all the time because it helped other missionaries feel more comfortable. And I'm okay with that because I want, I want the work to progress and I want to be able to everyone to feel as comfortable as possible. If you're feeling comfortable, then you're going to be able to, to work better. I think that's, that was just my take. And so, so yeah. Um, I, yeah. So as a result, I, I got along with a lot of people that ha- didn't get along with a lot of mi- companions. <laughs> so. no, I agree with your philosophy though. It was so important for people to be comfortable yeah, and to really feel like 
you cared about who they were prior to being a missionary yeah. because that's important to them. You know, that's their identity. Mm-hmm. And when you're a missionary, you kind of feel like you lose that identity because everyone is a cookie cutter. You know, you're, you're fitting in a box. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was just a really powerful way of connecting with people. Like I remember having a greenie, um, not my companion, but I was on an exchange and uh, we were just sitting in the car. I'll say his name. His name's Ryan Gustafson. He was trained by Elder Ford. Yeah. And uh, we're just sitting in the car and I was just talking to him about home. I said, what do you miss besides your girlfriend? Because he was really entangled with the girlfriend at the time. <clears throat> he said, I miss music. So I turned on the radio and one of his favorite songs was on oh, and it made nice. him feel like a million, million pounds, you know, not, not money, not, not yeah. weight. Yes. And, but more than anything, it was just like, I wanted him to know that like, guess what? I'm the zone leader. I still turn on the radio because I just want to hear a song that makes me happy once in a while, you know? And I just had a memory that flashed through my head. Do you remember when we used to drive down the road uh, from Julian Avenue going back to our flat and we'd always listen to Motab? Yes. And, and I used to conduct. Yes. And I said, <laughs> Girl, I saw you. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. And I told you at one point, I was like, someday I'm going to be in the Motab. And I didn't realize like the magnitude of that. You know, I, I like singing. Uh huh. But the people that are in the Mormon Tabernacle Choir nowadays, I guess it's the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Yes. They are professional musicians. Oh, it's yes. not it's not like, oh, you know someone who knows someone who can get you in the choir? It's not like that anymore. Not it's anymore, just, man. 40 no. years ago you could do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. But in any case, like I can uh, I can uh, appreciate what you said about making people feel comfortable and talking about things that were important to them because otherwise you truly do. You can get lost in, in the mission and that can be hard. So I I'm you and I are just cut from the same cloth. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Same, same person, two different packages. (laughs) Right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was good to, to be with him. Oh, that was the other thing is, so I remember, so Elder Bird and I organized a buy zone activity um, and Pilko and Archie came in and they're like, oh, we're doing away with buy zone activities. Uh, we don't think that's helpful for missionary work. And I was like, yeah, it's too bad. <laughs> they're like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, I already, I already organized it. So it's, it's going to happen. And they're like, well, you're not a zone leader anymore. And it's like, I know. So <laughs> you, you don't have to participate. Everyone else is going to be there. <laughs> They're like, and it, and Poco was so upset, Zach. He's like, oh, that's not how missionary work's supposed to happen, Elder Bear. <laughs> so, so, Poco's a P day, man. We're going to do this by zone activity. You can show up if you want to. I don't really care. I'm going home in four weeks. Shut up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, man. So it was, it was really hard. Uh, so I, I, at that point is where I understood like, holy crap, Elder Campbell was way more patient with me than he probably should have been, even though he, so there was times where he wasn't patient with me, but having someone come in and be the district leader and do things in a different way than you would do would be very hard uh, because having Archie and Pilko come in and do things differently than Elder Bird and I, and I did and differently than Elder Poland and I and differently than Elder Farnsworth and I. That was hard, man. It's yeah. hard to sit back and watch. Just be like, this is no. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't agree with the with the, the approach that you're taking. Like, that was hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah. Funny story about Pilko is <laughs> I remember being in, in Glasgow. Was it Glasgow? It must, yeah, it was Glasgow because Elder Martin uh, and Pilko were getting in, a, in an argument about the different styles of um, – uh, fish and chips that they have. I can't remember who was arguing for what, but I think Elder Martin was arguing for mushy peas on your on his chips, and, and he's like, "Yeah, why? <laughs> that's horrible." Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that was Pilko's point, and he's like, "What's, what's wrong with mushy peas on chips? Huh? What's wrong, Elder, Elder Pilkington? What's, what's wrong with mushy peas?" And Elder Pilkington's like, 
It's because it's not proper. Oh, it's just so good. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't go. Chill out. Oh, man. <laughs> he sells that Southampton, Southampton uh, accent so hard. It's like, golly. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. This Elder Pilkington was funny, man. Anytime you'd ask him a question, the answer would always be just Jesus. It'd just always be Jesus. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Oh, man. <laughs> I love Pilko's. Too, I know. As well. I, I, I honestly, I messaged him today. I was like, I got to get you on the podcast, man. And yeah. I haven't heard back from him, but I'm going to keep trying. Yeah. We love that us. guy. He's so, he's so good. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it was a rough time for me. Unfortunately, I wish I would have got, a, I would I would have met Pilkington in a different circumstance. Cause he and Archie really wanted to really, I think they were both brand new zone leaders. And so they were just really excited about stuff. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that they disapproved of that I would do. And they let me know it. And that was frustrating. <laughs> I also didn't care. <laughs> but that was, it was annoying <laughs> no but you and i we, we all dealt with someone who was close to going home yes and you know the term was trunky yes but but to be honest it was people who had kind of done their time it, <laughs> they i'm it, you know that's a horrible frame of reference but it's true like you've been in the mission the longest of anyone that's there yeah. Show some respect. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't necessarily demand respect. I just, um, I don't, because they didn't, they, they weren't, they didn't have the same philosophy as me is you can do your missionary work the way you think is best. And I'll do it the way that I think is best. Um, they, they were more assertive in, in wanting to change the way that things were done, the way that they thought that it should be done. That didn't always rub right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, and you went home in April and then yeah. I, I want to say, I guess, I think Elder DePold was probably the AP at that point, or he was, he was. pretty yeah. pretty close to it, right? Yeah. No, he was. He, he just got called as AP, I think that same, same time. Yeah. And I mean, that was the beginning of the transition from President Sister Vreens. And, yeah. and if you've listened to those beyond my time, the mission changed in a big way to the yeah. point where it was, it's, I mean, Jack and I have talked about it quite a bit. Like if that were the, the list of standards when we were there, no way. I don't think that, that I don't think that would have flown for, for me or for Jack or for, I mean, a lot of missionaries. I mean, can you imagine like, yeah. And, uh, one of our most recent podcasts that we talked with, uh, Craig Day, who he was a July 08 to July of 2010. He was like the stories that they told about your era of mission. Apparently you guys were just a bunch of apostates. And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, but again, like it was, it had everything to do with who was in leadership and how they facilitated things. But, you know, it's just a super, super interesting thing to see how, the mission transition to that after we were gone. Yeah. You know, and I think that we did a good job of laying the foundation of, you know, getting the work done and doing the things necessary to be able to then refine it a little further. And some people loved it and some people hated it. And then there were people who were indifferent. So, yeah. but uh, anyway, still, still very, been fascinating to see all that and, to hear the experiences of others beyond our time in Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's, that takes us, it takes us to kind of the close of my mission. There is, is, uh, I ended out with elder Snyder. i talked your ear off Zach. No, you haven't <laughs> <laughs> loved every minute of this. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, man. It's just, so I, I don't know, like my kids, they love, so, um, they love hearing mission stories because, I had, I had so much fun because I got, um, I got to teach a lot of people, but for, for me, most of the value came from uh, those few that I taught, but mostly it was from missionaries, um, that made an impact on me. 
Yeah. Uh, and Elder Grant, Elder Hager, Elder Cardenas, like Elder Newman, and, and um, those leaders that I had, Elder Brownlow, early on made a huge impact on me. And then those others that I got to serve around afterwards uh, um, were just, th- those relationships were so long lasting. Like it was great, me and Midge. And um, it's just, it was just a lot of fun uh, to be, to be around those guys, streeter um, guys that I never got to serve with individually, but made a huge impact on me in the times that we were able to be together, which was just, a, it was a awesome, just an awesome experience overall. Um, the people you get to meet, the, the lives that you get to see change. It's just such an awesome, cool thing. So, yeah, no, yeah. I, I agree. And every single one of us, as we've, reflected we learned something from each of our companions whether we got along with them and loved every minute that we were with them or we wondered how we would get through the next five minutes with a companion that just didn't want to run the same direction we wanted to run right right you know but it's nice to step back and be reflective at this point in time yeah and uh you know as, as Jack and I have reached out to more people, it's been amazing to hear who's listening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kid you not. I, I'm going to just share my experience today. So I found the phone number of Adam Rolo. Oh, I good. Because I, I him, wanted to hear from Rolo. Man, Rolo is awesome. I sent him a text today. And the way that I introduce it, so anybody who sees a text message from an 801 phone number, and I'm asking, is this the famous name behind it? His response was awesome. He's like, the only person that calls me the famous Adam Rolo is President Vrains. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's so great, dude. But he told me, he's like, I've been listening to these and they have they have had an impact on me. And I was like, that is the thing that I love when you hear or get in touch with someone who's heard about it from somebody else and isn't quite as involved yet. Yeah. But being able to say, we'd love to have you come on. And they're like, I'm all in, Yeah, you know, and, and there's still some that we're working on. I can tell you that there's, there's those that are involved in the church and those that are not. And so some of those conversations are, I don't care. Yeah. Come and talk to us about how much you love Scotland and the people that you were with while you were there. Yeah, we still you want know. your experiences. It's, that, that's awesome, and I love I love that that's that it's so open like that. I think it's it's wonderful because everyone's got different walks of life right now, and that's that's okay. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we we still want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, and and to reference again, you know, Craig Craig Day, because he was introduced to the mission amongst the pretty heaviness of what they're calling hammer time. You know, he said that there was a period of time in his life where he reflected very negatively about his mission. Uh, But since listening to the podcast, his perspective has changed. Oh, that's cool. And so that those are the types of conversations that are just, they're just amazing. Like being able to help people realize that despite everything that happened in the mission that in the moment was absolute crap. There was still a lot of good that came out of those things for everybody, you know, and the the unique thing that we've realized more than anything is everyone has a different, unique story. And it is just, it, it is just fascinating to think about <laughs> the timelines and where we all fit together. And despite feeling like we were on an island with our companion for six weeks or longer, you know? Yeah. It's just been so much fun. So I know you say you talked my ear off, but (laughs) I mean, this is my notes right here, Brian. I wrote everybody's (laughs) name down. I wrote companions. I mean, that's what I've been doing. And so I I'm piecing things together. Like when you say who is Paul Christensen's traveling companion, I'm like, Move, I know, who, I know, I know who it is. <laughs> I talked to him. He shared about it. You know, like yeah. it's just, it's been so fascinating. There's so much love, and you know what? I guarantee that 
more and more people will find out about it. More and more people will hear the stories that are being shared. I'm going to post on the SEM Facebook page this episode and tag <laughs> every single person who's on this list. Oh, good. <laughs> because I, 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 I mean, there's easily 40 or 50 names that you gave me. Oh, man. Yeah. It was, I mean, yeah. so much, so much good. So much good. Yeah. So you, you, I just want you to know how much I love you more, more than, more than just being one of my companions. You're my brother. And that connection, the kindred spirit that we have from our time together in Scotland, that's never going away. It is, it is one thing that we will forever be bound by, you know, nothing better in this world. Every time I put on a a piece of tartan, whether it's a tie or a kilt or anything in between. It's just an amazing connection that we will have forever. And I, I said this on a recent podcast. I, f- I feel very, very privileged that I was able to serve in that land with the elders and sisters that I did. Yeah. And I'm sure that you can recollect and say the exact same thing that we just, we were there for our time and our purpose and we accomplished that purpose and as a result we are forever connected and that's amazing like just just thinking about that like our podcast the time frame we're looking at is july of 2000 to july of 2010 and all of those people are connected and even beyond that like (laughs) but we're trying to have a scope where we can try to talk to as many people as possible without just going crazy but man it is (laughs) It just it brings me so much joy to listen and to recollect and to you know just share in the joy that came from our time in Scotland. So yeah. I just I just again I want you to know how much I love you. I'm so grateful that you took some time to come on here and uh, and be with us again. And again, thank you for being the guinea pig at the beginning <laughs> of this. I mean. Jack and I still look at it and can't believe that it was almost a year ago that he and I recorded our podcast. And then I think it was about May, June timeframe when we first talked, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I have to look, I have to look back, but it's, I mean, we're getting close to a year, you know, we're closing in on a hundred episodes so awesome. <laughs> we we have almost 6000 listens on our podcast. We have over 20,000 views on YouTube. I mean, it's just crazy. And it it's still growing. Yeah. Like more and more people are hearing about it. And more and more people who didn't serve in Scotland are hearing about it and saying, "Man, I wish my mission had that." <laughs> we, sorry, we we did it first. We're the cool ones. Yeah, no. So I, so actually, um, I shared a couple of of these uh, with with a guy in my ward um, who is he's just an awesome dude. He served in, uh, he's about our age, but he served in Costa Rica, and he's getting together with a companion, and he's like, "We're doing this." He's like, "We're doing that thing," because that's that's just so awesome. He's like, "It's just, it's a great idea," and he's like, "We want to get it done, so we're we're doing it." Thanks for introducing. Oh, me. <laughs> so. that's, that's so cool. Yeah. See, the, the thing that I found out, um, so Christian Lucas came in after you went home and uh, he and I correspond a lot. And he said that uh, he introduced it to his stake president. And I think he lives in the, the Manchester area. Uh-huh. And what they did is um, they started recording former missionaries, anyone who served a mission in their stake, they're recording their experiences and then sharing it with the youth. Oh, that's so cool. So that the youth can be like, this is this guy's mission experience. I mean, just like, there's just so much good from talking about it. And I mean, every phone call, every text message, every voicemail I've gotten from you since we first talked, like I get joy Yeah, knowing that you're listening and, we're corresponding mission missionaries are corresponding with people. They haven't talked to in years because of this. That's what I love about this is there's just so much positivity that's happening as a result. So 
I just want to thank you again for being a contributor. You're, you're amazing. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being on here. And I know for a certainty that you will continue to send referrals our way. So absolutely, man. Absolutely. So. Right. Well, I will, I will say good night to you and we'll say good night to those listening and uh, we'll talk to you very, very, very soon. All right. Cheerio. All right. Cheerio, man. Right. Cheerio the new. All right.